Hello, welcome back to the Oxford Map live stream. My name's James. Um, I said that with surprise, like I was <laughs> unsure how the sentence was going to end. Um, I was having so much fun talking to chat just now that I almost forgot to go live. That would have been a shame, wouldn't it? Um, how are you doing, chat? Are you all right? I hope you're doing okay. Um, for context here, it, we're going live on uh, Thursday and this Thursday is A-level results day. Uh, so there are some people talking in chat about uh, A-levels a and things like that. People in chat say, hi, um, Jack the Kipper says it's working, which is great. I assume they mean me, the, the live stream is, is going up. We're going to talk about the Simpass papers. I've got them on the screen here. Uh, we're going to zoom in, don't worry. Um, but I always like to start by checking how chat is doing. Uh, I think I have the ability to switch on chat today as well. I think we have that available. There we go. Okay. We do a vote. How's your day? Someone's straight in there with one star. Uh, and then everybody else is straight in there with all of the other numbers. Hi, Jamie. Uh, hi, Ben. Um, hi, Urban. Uh, Miles in there as well. Um, we got some like mild news. Um, Herb, a few weeks ago, mentioned a book on the live stream uh, where one of the characters really likes Catalan numbers. Um, Herb has come back, and I'm, I'm reading this out because it was before we went live. Um, Herb says the book is called Invisibly Breathing by Eileen Merriman. That's Invisibly Breathing by Eileen Merriman. Uh, there's a main character who really likes Catalan numbers. Uh, guess who else really likes Catalan numbers? Uh, it's me. Um, <laughs> I recently was in Cambridge. Um, I got to the Cambridge University bookstore uh, and I found this book. Um, it's it's called Catalan Numbers. Um, the gimmick for this book is that it's 200 questions to which the answer is always the Catalan numbers. Um, so I'm not, <laughs> not quite sure what to expect, um, but it's got loads of things going on where loads of different interpretations of the Catalan numbers, loads of different problems where the Catalan numbers turn up. Um, so I'm super excited about this. We're probably going to do an episode about the Catalan numbers on the Oxford Online Maths Club at some point in the future. Yeah, sorry, chat. So I sometimes switch to um, sometimes switch to the real world cam without warning you, and that can be quite quite terrifying, right? When it's like suddenly my desk instead of my screen. Uh, <laughs> good. Um, Cyril asks, is watching this uh, sufficient preparation? Um, uh, I always say that uh, not just watching maths, uh, but you've also got to do some maths yourself. I'm going to do spoilers for a lot of these questions today, uh, 2007 and 2008. Um, I think it would do you good to try some of the questions first. Um, if you're watching live um, and you would like to pause and go and try the questions and then come back, that's fine with me. Um, if you're watching the replay, uh, you are already, already watching a recording, so uh, you can pause and try some questions. Um, we're not going to talk about all of them, but we're going to try and talk about some of them. Where's chat gone? Chat was there just a minute ago. There it is. Oh, look, four or five are drawing. Perhaps it's an exciting sort of good day. Um, I'm going to do some questions in chat as well, uh, very quickly, um, because people have got some A-level questions, which which I respect, right? Um, some people are saying uh, they're in year 12, they did some A-levels, which either A, went really well, or B, didn't go as well as they hoped. Um, either way, you're going to declare those on your UCAS application because you have to. Um, but when you're applying to university, universities will know that you've also got year 13 and you've got some more grades coming in year 13. Uh, maybe you're planning to resit some A-levels, um, in which case uh, you'll you'll have that chance to maybe get the grades that you need. Um, or maybe you'll have some uh, A-level results in the bank from doing Year 12, uh, which from, from my point of view in Oxford, um, if you've got an A-star in the bank, that's basically the same as being about to get an A-star because uh, most of our candidates who are predicted an A-star get an A-star. So congratulations if you've got an A-star today. I'm not sure you have much advantage over people who are Predictors may start because a lot of people are going to get a star. Uh, Josh is here and excited to find out all the things that they did wrong. Uh, and anonymous literally did two thousand and seven yesterday, but as a sort of coincidence, I think, from from context. Uh, someone says they're down at uh, 50, 50 out of one hundred. Fifty out of one hundred is okay. It's good sideways. We've got a couple of months to go, so that's not too bad at all. Uh, we're going to get better at solving tricky problems, I think, or at least getting halfway through. Halfway through is good. Uh, am I doing outreach instead of research? Yes, um, I left the world of research, academia. Um, I stopped doing uh, research that almost nobody was reading, and I started doing this. Oh, five has just beaten four, hooray. Um, almost nobody was reading my uh, research. There are, I think, literally more people watching this live stream live than have ever read my, my research papers. Um, so I think I made the right switch, but we'll, we'll see. 
it's not just about viewers, is it? But that is a little bit how it works. Uh, 60s, 5, 50, 60s. There's no minimum score to take part in that live stream. People are now worried. Um, uh, uh, there's no minimum score. We're all here to learn. We're all here to get better. Me especially. Uh, I'm going to make some really stupid mistakes over the next couple of hours. Um, you can spot me uh, making them. Uh, live, in chat if you like. Um, ah, and I want to call out this. Uh, school has applied to be a Matt's test centre, hasn't had a response. Um, please get them to keep emailing. Uh, in particular, they can email, I think the address is tests at ox. I'm just saying that live. Um, there is an email address they can contact. Um, if you want them to contact me instead and get me to contact my colleagues in tests, uh, then go for it. But <laughs> I'm mostly going to forward emails to the test thing. Four or five in our drawing, which means someone voted four um, at the last minute. Right, let's stop that. That was fun. But I'm always looking out for people who score one and two, one or two. But you know, um, not that many people this week. Um, I assume it was something to do with A levels. Really, had a lot of A level stuff going on today. Um, Good, okay, uh, my research was on fluid dynamics. You'll be pleased to know that no MAT questions have ever been on fluid dynamics, as far as I'm aware, like not even secretly. Um, uh, doing AEA, if you've got access to AEA, Dan, then it's a, a source of tricky math questions. Um, ah, here's a big question. Do I think that recent MAT papers are harder than early 2000 MAT papers? Uh, lots of people tell me that they think that. Um, in particular, lots of people tell me that they think that questions that have appeared since I started working here are harder than the ones from before. People point at me a lot. Um, I, I don't think that's fair, <laughs> but I do agree that some of the questions in the first few years, which we're going to look at today and next week, some of the questions in the first few, year, few years are maybe now so like, well known that uh, we couldn't really use them uh, again. Uh, I'm thinking in particular about uh, this Millennium School student locker one. Uh, down here, if you had a go at this from 2008 about lockers, I just feel like I've seen this question before somewhere with light bulbs or with uh, different numbers in it, but this idea about square numbers uh, means that I feel like I've seen this question before. Whereas in recent years, I think we're, we're more careful to do a question that uh, it's less likely anybody's seen it before. Um, okay. Yeah, it was the same, same research area, well, same, Dr. Tom Crawford also did fluid dynamics at the same university as me, uh, one year up from me. Uh, you can see the mean scores, uh, so you can judge the difficulty. Remember that it's not the same people taking each test. Um, that would be awful. Um, it's a different cohort each year, so it's not quite like a fair thing. You have to assume that the cohorts are about the same. Um, uh, Harriet likes that. Favourite question five ever. Uh, sorry, Harriet. I guess I was just kind of saying that I'm not doing exactly that again. Um, <laughs> Well, I suppose you should never expect exactly the same question five again, right? Um, there's an English language. Um, there's an English language requirement. Sorry, I'm now just talking to chat. Um, if you're watching the replay, you can fast forward me or put me on double speed. Recently, I met a whole bunch more people who watch this on double speed. Hey. Um, <laughs> uh, no, lost what I was saying. Uh, English language. There's an English language requirement. It doesn't have to be English language GCSE. We've got no minimum GCSE requirements for maths at Oxford. Um, you can find out what it is by searching for Oxford University English language requirements. Um, there are lots of different tests we accept, and you don't need to do anything before you apply. Um, good. Hi also to the student who's marking, uh, or not marking, student. Uh, there's a student helper administrating chat. I can't remember uh, who uh, that is. Um, and there's a request for chat to get safe between streams. Um, it, I like to tidy it up in between streams so that occasionally I can flip it to popular. You see, if I flip it to popular, it's um, things that are popular today, which feels quite nice. Um, that's why I clean it up. Um, so someone got an A in AS Further Maths today. Hooray! That's the best grade you can get in AS Level Further Maths. And look how happy they are. They put, oh, you guys with your emojis. Uh, oh, and David asked a question that I missed. You see, this is good. Whereas otherwise it would just be someone shouting logarithms at me from several weeks ago. Um, how strictly are proofs graded on the map? We know that people doing that are not professional mathematicians yet. Um, we are absolutely looking for ideas. Uh, ideas is the, the main currency of what we're looking for. Um, sometimes there are, there are uh, subtleties that we might try to give some marks for as well. Um, so if something likes for even numbers, uh, most of the time, then identifying that it, it doesn't work for even numbers that are also multiples of 10 might be useful. 
if it's something to do with last digits or something. Um, yes, good, okay. So I'll say that's good evening, Doctor, which reminds me of how the Daleks talk to Doctor Who. Um, Doctor! <laughs> People normally call me James. No one's shouting flashcards anymore. No one's shouting flashcards anymore because I did the flashcards. I went and did them. <laughs> I learned. <laughs> the thing that the thing that horrifies me is the idea of people are going to shout something else next. Um, encouraging me to do my job. Right. Okay, chat. We're going to see that. I think. <laughs> um, there are twenty new flashcards available on the Mac website. Um, you can download them if you go there and click on the links of it. There are now sixty of them because we released what I'm calling an expansion pack. Oops, I think I just rejected someone's question by mistake by clicking in the wrong place. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, people are talking about further maths. Why are you talking about further maths? Do you want to pass map papers in the same format? Uh, the format of the test is the same, except there's no question seven. So can I upload some of the past map papers in the same format? Uh, I could delete the questions. You don't mean that, right? Um, they're going to be shown to you on a screen, and we are working on a tech demo so that you can look at what that looks like. This is a 2023 thing that you're going to see the questions on the screen, and we are working on a tech demo. Um, I believe there's a version ready to go. I think I was told it was launching soon, recently. So hang on, doing the calculus. Um, soon means a couple of weeks. Recently means maybe only one week. So okay, right, okay, maybe maybe a week. Uh, you are not missing on any inside jokes, except uh, I have some flashcards a lot. Um, the flashcards is a resource. Uh, so that's hard to explain things. Um, the flashcards are a resource that look like um, this. Um, here they are. Um, they've got some things on the front, like prime number p. And the idea is you look at the card and you think, I know what a prime is. Um, it, oh yeah, the ones where the only factors of p are 1 and p. Brilliant, okay. Uh, give me another one. Well, how do you find the area between functional axes? The idea being that you're training your kind of uh, instinctive reactions to say, ah, normals, yes, okay, I know how they work. Uh, minus 1 over the gradient, uh, minus 1 over the derivative is the gradient, and then you've got to add, oh gosh, okay, it's complicated, right? Okay. <laughs> Um, tangents are in here too, and translations, uh, and there are now 60 of these. People liked them, and they pressured me for ages to make some more, so we've made some more. Yes, that I believe is the only thing close to an in-joke. I kind of latched onto the fact that you said I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of in-jokes at the same time as somebody else said, what flashcards? So that's, that's this. Um, question 7, entirely a computer science department decision. Um, they decided that they wanted computer science applicants to do question three instead. Um, I think that's as much as I can say. Obviously, if I was being very helpful, I would now tell you what question three is, but that's not really how this works. Uh, good. Uh, school's not running the mat, so you're going to try and register somewhere else at a close test center. Yes. How do I find my closest test center? If you go to the MAP website, there's a link through to um, something about test centers registering. It looks like it's a link for your teachers, like schools of teachers. It's in a sentence, which makes it sound like it's for your teachers. Um, but if you follow that link, you can find test centers over there. Um, let's try and find the page. Yeah, actually, I'm a little bit worried about this. So I think I'm going to do it now. Um, let's, let's try and do this together. Uh, just because a little bit worried that's a bit technical. Um, here's the website that I'm trying to point people towards. Um, so it's ox.ac.uk slash tests, plural. Um, which expands to this really long URL, um, and you get you turn up here. It's got some information about uh, about these things. I have tried to link to this from so that if you start at that website, you can maybe find your way through. Um, schools and colleges can apply in here, um, and there's a timeline. And then, oh my goodness, can I remember how to find a test center? Can I remember how to find a test center Whew. using the website? Can't remember. Can't remember. Do I go here? Find a test center, yes I do. That was not obvious. We need to make that button better, don't we? What do I click on? Apply for authorization to run Oxford's admissions test and then find a test center. Nah, that's not very sensible, is it? We can do better than that. Uh, and then you can find some test centers uh, around the world. Um, we are adding more and more all the time to try and get these. Uh, this is for the people who are asking about test centers. There's no, uh, no, no threshold for the um, the, the map. We're just going to get as many marks as we can. Yep, yeah, cool. Right, good. Okay, Marcus is here. Hi, Marcus. 
<laughs> and everyone else. Sorry, I don't know why I singled out Marcus. Uh, right, what are we doing? We're going to do some maths. Let's go. Um, so, voting. Uh, we're going to look at 2007 first. Um, you can vote in chat um, as to which questions you think we should try. Um, we've already done some of the question, 2007 questions before on this show. Um, I think I can remember which ones. Um, so, you know, be nice to me. Please don't make me say the same thing again that I've already said. Um, that won't be that funny, will it? Um, and some of them are just sort of classics that I talk about quite a lot. So I'm not totally sure which ones uh, we've done. Um, I'm pretty sure we've done this logarithm question on the live stream recently. Uh, and I think we've done question two on the live stream recently as well, um, talking about these uh, functions where it looks really horrible, but when you start putting in values of n, it, it uh, simplifies a little bit. Um, question three, I'm not sure we've talked about this one. Um, it's not very difficult, so I think, I think we might be okay. Uh, how's that voting going? Ooh, four. I thought we talked about four on the live stream a while ago. Let me have a quick look over here. Uh, why can't I see the results? Oh no, there's, there's votes for question five. <laughs> I managed to set it so that you can see the results and I can't. That's fun, isn't it? Five I've circled because I think it's a chunky question that we can have a go at. It's one of these recursive functions and it even uses the word recursion. Um, words in italics are being defined. Um, six is a truth light thing that I think we did two weeks ago and seven is ox styles which we did one week ago. Um, if you're joining us for the first time today uh, we've been doing various sessions on different topics where we've used some of the past questions as examples. Um, as we look at past papers over the next few weeks I'm going to try and skip the ones that we've already done on the show um, so that people aren't seeing them twice. Um, if you want to see them you can go back and find them. Uh, as we get further through the past papers, uh, that will stop happening and we'll be just sort of free to look at lots of different questions on past papers. At that point, people might even start trying, I suppose, uh, setting themselves past papers under timed conditions, perhaps. Uh, but you don't have to, just how you might like to join in. Lots of votes for question five at the moment. Uh, also votes for, perhaps predictably, the long questions and then a couple of shorts. I would like to dance around a bit between the long questions and the short questions, I think, um, so that it's not just long question after long question. I'd also like to switch to a different view if possible. Whoa, this is a technical challenge. Uh, sorry to the person who said get on with it a second ago. I'm trying. There we go. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. We cut like that. We scroll down to question five, because question five's one. And then we can do a short question. And it's just slightly irritating that I have to scroll like this. <laughs> this is the, the joy of the split screen setup and the terribleness of how long the PDF is. Oh my goodness. Four. You ready? Five. Cool. Right. Okay. And also, I can't see. Fix that. Fix that. Herb says, I remember doing question three, which is helpful. Thank you. Um, and Anonymous says, uh, when is reaction to innovation versus maths? I uh, reckon I might do it today at the end of the show. Um, if you're watching the replay, why not fast forward and find out if that's true or not? Uh, if you're watching live, why not? I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, let's do it today at the end, if we're good. <laughs> remembering my teacher, teacher, <laughs> remembering my teachers, if we're good, do it at the end today. Uh, an anonymous person in chat, I've just missed you, sorry. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for 22, 22 live streams. Put you on screen, put you on screen. Where are you, where are you, where are you? Sorry, I know I keep saying we're going to start, and then we don't start. It's very annoying for the loyal people who are here um, live. Um, I just want to say thanks for the 22, 22 live stream. Got my other results today and made my other start maths in 23 in Oxford. See you in October. Cool, right, good. That'll be good. Uh, good, okay, that person's happy, and now everyone else will react to maths. Uh, okay. Long table from uh, David in chat. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, chat is now visiting from the future uh, to just sort of dunk on me a bit. Um, right, good, okay. Um, so we've got a function uh, and it's defined in this weird recursive way. So f of n is one if n is zero, and then otherwise you have to do a lookup thing where if n is even, you do one thing, if n is odd, you do something else. And we're asked for the value of f, f of five. So let's try and follow the rules. Um, f of five, ugh, um, f of five, uh, 
um, is, well, 5 is odd, so I'm supposed to read off that last line. Um, what's n? This is slightly awkward, isn't it? Um, I suppose n is 5, it's this number over here. Um, so I'm supposed to put in 2 as f of 4. Um, quick check, if 5 is bigger than 0 and 5 is odd, good. Um, okay, so it's 2 times whatever f of 4 is. Okay, uh, what was f of 4? Let's see if I can write down another true statement. Um, so I'm supposed to say f of, and then n over 2 would be 2, and square it. So I'm reading the middle line this time because 4 is even. Uh, pretty nice, but I don't know what f of 2 is, so hopefully this will get me there. f of 2 is f of 1 squared. Reading off the middle line because 2 is also even. Um, and, oh my goodness, uh, do I know f of 1? No, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> f of 1 is, well, n is odd, so it's 2 times f of 0. And f of 0, aha, I do know f of 0. f of 0 is the number 1, so this is 2. Uh, so now we can rebuild it. Uh, so working back up, for, but working back up, f of 2. So f of 2 is f of 1 squared is 4. f of 4 is f of 2 squared is 16. And then f of 5 is going to be 32, 2 times that, I hope. Recursion is when you uh, repeatedly apply the same thing again and again and again. It's a bit like the way um, f up there, f of n, is defined on the left um, in terms of, uh-oh, f on the right as well. Um, if you Google the word recursion, the first result is uh, recursion. Uh, so, no, it says, did you mean recursion? And then you click on it and it goes around again. It's, um, uh, good. Yeah, good. Okay, cool. Uh, David in chat also has 32. Uh, there's a plane outside. Yeah, Oxford is quite near. Quite a lot of air bases. Oh, I put I put filtering on my microphone. It's supposed to be better now? I don't know if it's better. Uh, recursion's sort of basic enough, I suppose. Well, whether, whether you call it recursion or not. Um, this sort of thing is sort of basic enough that uh, it's not on the syllabus explicitly. Um, you can work with this, right? You can imply, you can you can infer the value of f of 5 from the available information. People have got 32 in chat, which is good. Uh, yes, good. We have two Doctor Who references. Uh, yeah, there we go, good. I didn't quite nail the Google joke. Probably I should have just asked you to Google. Somebody in chat asked what's recursion, I should have just got them to Google it, but that would have sounded super rude. Um, but then funny. Uh, okay, this question has got definition in it. Uh, the recursion def f of n is defined to be the number of other integers m such that the value fm is calculated while computing the value of f of n. I think a computer scientist may have written this question. For example, the recursion depth of f of 4 is 3. I want those numbers back. There they are. f of 4 is 3 because the values of f, 2, 1 and 0 are all needed to work out f of 4. But then f of five, I can get f of five. I can get with one more calculation. So I think the recursion depth of f of five is just going to be four, because it's just an extra calculation on the end, right? Oh my goodness, I've never been so stressed about adding together small numbers. Yeah, I need. Okay, <laughs> it's four <laughs> um, because we need zero, one, two, and four along the way in order to get f of 5. It's the number of other integers. Yeah, okay, so there's the word other at the top. You don't count n itself when you're doing this. Okay, thanks. Herb in chat tells me that 3 plus 1 is 4, so that, that's pretty good. Um, error carried forwards does happen in mat a bit uh, where it's appropriate. Um, I, mean, I guess you've asked because if you got the value of f of 5 wrong because you did something complicated, would you now get the mark for recursion depth? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I would state it here, I think. The question doesn't say explain or justify. Um, on the other hand, it's only going to take you, what, 30 seconds to write out because, blah, and then that mark is now locked down. And if, weirdly, it turns out there was two marks, oh, it is worth two marks. Um, if, weirdly, that it turns out that part's worth two marks, then we're definitely getting both marks. Um, yes, OK. Some of the old questions have got this thing where I think they implicitly want you to explain stuff, which I'm not very jazzed about. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know how they marked it if somebody just wrote four and moved on. Hmm. And then you have in-between ones, right? Like if Herb literally writes three plus one equals four, does that count as explaining? Marking is tricky. Uh, how much explanation do you want? Uh, because explaining is really about, oh, never mind, talking to people. Okay, g of n is a new function. It's defined for all integers n uh, greater than or equal to zero as follows. g of n is zero, of n is zero. Uh, it's one plus g of n over two. And one plus g of n minus one, uh, depending on if n's even or odd. What is g of five? Okay, we can play this game again, can't we? Um, so g of five is, off I go. Um, five is odd, so it's one plus g of four. Um, g of four is one plus g of two. g of two is one plus g of one. And g of one is one plus g of g of zero. Uh, and then g of zero equals one. So, oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, is it five? That's not feel right. I feel like I wanted four. What have I done? Ah, g of, g of zero is zero, the last line is wrong. One, two, three, four. I just can't read. That top line says zero. Whoops. Um, so g of five is four. Cool. Yeah, thanks, chat. Oh, this is just juicing the, there we go, thank you. This is juicing the um, evaluation metric of how many people have messaged in chat because like six people have just told me my typo. Excellent, get those numbers. Uh, and get the correct numbers as well, so that's, that's, that's good. Um, it's like it counts its own recursion depth, LOL, says Patricia in chat. Um, yep. <laughs> I think that's the joke. <laughs> I think it's also counting the recursion depth of F. Is that the point of this question? Yeah, that's the point of this question, Patricia. Patricia. Um, yes, the value of G and N is going to be the recursion depth of F of N. Because it's counting, right? It adds one each time a thing happens, counting, um, and it follows the same integers on the way down as f does because that n over 2 n minus 1 stuff is all the same right okay we'll get there when we get there i suppose um <laughs> it's not i think it's not a spoiler if you didn't really know where that was going um people in chat are getting quite excited i have to be careful not to get too excited right because i don't know actually um I think it leaves people behind a bit. If I get too excited and I go too fast, then I'm probably leaving people behind. Um, G of two to the K. Um, okay, so we've been asked. Uh, briefly explain your answer. So this uh, 2007 question does sometimes ask us to explain our answer. Um, back up here, I guess that's equal to one plus G of two to the K minus one. And here I'm going to be a little bit careful and say if k is bigger than or equal to 1. So 2 to the k is even if k is bigger than or equal to 1. Um, I don't quite know how I'm going to lay this out because my next idea is that this is 1 plus 1 plus g of 2 to the k minus 2. I suppose if k is bigger than or equal to 2 is what I have to write there. Um, so I suppose what I'm what I'm trying to write down is something like equals dot 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 equals, and the pattern here is that um, the pattern here is that uh, the ones at the front added to the powers up here always seem to be k. Um, each step down, I, I, that power goes down by one because I'm dividing by two, and there's an extra one plus at the front, so they're kind of in balance, um, which it was why I'm trying to say that this is k plus g of 2 to the 0, um, which is good news for us because we know 2 to the 0. 2 to the 0 is 1. And then uh, that's going to be our g of 1 is something like the number 1. So this is k plus 1, um, I think. So that's not too bad. Um, I have to briefly explain my answer. So I guess I should write a sentence to say something like, dividing by two exactly k times. Um, that'd be convincing enough for me, I think. Um, two to k is, is, is very even in a way, and it's, it's, it's always even with the exception to the zero. I'm trying to be a little bit careful, and I was being maybe more cautious than, than you might have been um, at the top, because if k is zero, then I can't do this step at all. I want to demonstrate 
that I guess in general this step happens lots of times. But I'm being a little bit careful to say, I mean, I'm showing you happening lots of times, but maybe it doesn't happen at all. Maybe if k is zero, then this is just, you don't get to divide by two at all today. Um, second to last line, please. Um, yeah, sure. So um, this line reads one plus one plus g of two to the k minus two. The pattern is that I'm going to keep dividing by two using the middle line of the definition of g. Keep dividing by two. And that's going to keep spitting out 1 plus each time, because on the left it says gn, and then on the right it says 1 plus, now you can divide by 2, g of n over 2. Um, so it's going to keep going, and like a little machine, it's going to keep pumping out 1 plus out the front, and it's going to keep ticking down the power, and the dot 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 is me saying, I'm going to do that exactly k times. And once I've done that k times, that's when I run out of 2s to divide by, the machine has to stop, uh, because it's now sp spat out um, exactly k, one pluses at the front, and it's reduced the power by uh, exactly k. So a bit like how this is one plus g of two to the k minus one, and this is two plus g of two to the k minus two. This is k plus g of two to the k minus k. Um, I'm making a big deal of that. Um, I think I want to give you the idea that this step kind of matters. That your brief justification or brief explanation should say something about repeatedly doing this thing a lot. Um, I, I doubt that anyone would say uh, the stuff over here. I'm being careful because if I, if I write anything that's not exactly true, um, I get uh, I get told off. Um, uh, yeah, so and actually David's worried about that too. So I think probably be quite lenient. Let me have a quick look at the marks on the web, which I've printed. Uh, yeah, yeah, the marks on the web are very vague. Uh, the marks on the web actually say for any natural number k, g of 2 to the k equals 1 plus g of 2 to the k minus 1, which is not true for the natural number 0. Depends if you think 0 is natural or not, I suppose. We're not going there again. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, if, it was my, if it was my question, I would maybe rule out k equals 0, or maybe I, I'd... It feels like I'm being pedantic now. I'm, I'm up against... People who don't want to be as pedantic as me, which is fair enough. Okay, um, next part, we've got to add some things together. Someone in chat says, I wrote a massive explanation. That's fine, of course, um, provided you've got time to write out a massive explanation. Um, uh, my working is, my working there was probably on screen, not very much. Um, maybe enough. I should write a sentence. I should probably write a sentence. Maybe it's good for the show if I put a sentence on the board. Um, uh, dividing by two exactly k times. Uh, and then down here I'll write because, <laughs> because g of one equals one. Um, and maybe I'll spell that out a bit, actually. I've decided, as I was writing it, I've decided I'm going to write this um, to make it even clearer why that last line is true. Um, and that's probably enough now. I can't really see how I'd make that more watertight. Anyway, the next part's going to be harder. So and briefly explain your answer is going to be a tougher thing to do here. You ready? Uh, just in case. Uh, Nav hi, uh, Nav just turned up and says they got an A star. So they, yeah, shout out on the live stream as well. Congrats, Nav! Your A star is now uh, cemented in an Oxford uh, YouTube video forever. Uh, <laughs> despite what some people say, I think your A level results are important forever. Uh, do I believe that? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, okay. So, in a similar way, we've got. L uh, bigger than K, so these things are not equal, there's no equal sign on that middle inequality, um, but then K is bigger than or equal to zero. And I'm being cautious again, I suppose. No, let's not be cautious. Let's be reckless. Um, so I'm just doing the divide by two trick again. It's not really a trick, I suppose, it's part of the definition of, part of the definition of how G works. So it recursively goes down. Um, when am I going to stop? I think I'm going to stop when I get down to pulling out uh, 
2 to the k out here. Uh, just like before, I'm going to do this k times. Uh, which might be 0 times. If it's 0 times, then my working out is kind of a bit dodgy. Because there shouldn't really be any lines in between. <laughs> but if it's, if it's k times, fine, okay. Um, I might not write out this line in an exam, I've realised. Because speed. Um, okay, now I've got an odd number. Uh, and I'd probably scatter in here is even. And then if I felt, felt, as I wrote that, I felt it wasn't very convincing, so I'm going to add in here because L is bigger than K. I mean, that's the key reason, right? That thing's definitely got some twos in it. I think I'm very scared about the number zero over the last 10 minutes. Um, what am I doing? Ah, yes, live stream. Uh, right, this is odd inside the G, that's where I got to, which means I need to apply the other one, right? Finally, an odd number, uh, 1 plus G of N minus 1. Oh, that's not so bad. Oh, I've got one of the screen. Uh, 1 plus G of 2 to the L minus K. And we know what that is. Um, that's L minus K plus 1, because we just did, in the previous part, we just did powers of 2. Um, so maybe this is going to look a little bit like I'm cheating or going too fast. But what I really want to write down here is this. I'm going to put brackets around it to make it clear. And I'm going to write by part, what's the previous part? 4. Um, to make it really clear that I know what I'm doing. And then I'm going to conclude this is L plus 2. Good. How do I know that's odd? Um, well, it's got a big plus 1 on it, so I'm sort of hoping that... <laughs> I think that it's like loads of twos and then plus one. So I was looking for a reason for this to be even, I suppose. Um, it looks odd, uh, but I had to kind of check, I suppose, that this thing out, out here, two to the power, feels even. Oh yeah, double check. It's not two to the zero, is it? It's not two to the zero, it's two to the something. It's very even. Um, so this is two to something plus one. Sorry, very even is not a phrase. That that kind of sounded like an in-joke as well, which I, I'm trying to, trying to reduce, but... Uh, if something is a multiple of two, you say it's even. If it's, something, if it's a multiple of lots of powers of two, I say it's very even. That's, that's not helpful. Uh, my greatest fear, the number zero. And fear itself. Is that what Harry Potter's afraid of? Fear itself? No, I, uh, yeah, no, no, I made that up. Uh, so, someone says, I don't get it, which is fine. Um, I think it might be worth trying an example. Um, we already did G of 5. G of 5, 5 is of that form. It's a power of 2 plus another power of 2. It's um, 2 squared plus 2 to the 0. I think maybe that's not super helpful because um, uh, 0 is quite a special number. I'm scared of 0. Um, but let's say if you're trying to work out G of 6, then you'll need to work out G of 3. And then you'll go to g of, from 3 you'll go to 2, uh, using the g of n is 1 plus g n minus 1, because 3 is odd. Um, and then you're safe, then you can go down or tick down and down 2, 1, 0, because we know how to do powers of 2. Um, and in general, what happens is you see dividing by 2, 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 from your start number. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and then oh, you're going to hit an odd number right in the middle. You say that's odd. Uh, you apply the last line of the definition of G, and then you see power of two again. And that makes you happy. There we go. You get down to G of zero. That's kind of the pattern that you get for these numbers. Um, and you can try that out maybe for a couple of uh, sums of powers of two um, until you see, aha, there's a general rule here for what's going on. Now, because I'm doing this quite fast, I'm maybe skipping some of the steps that you might do, some of the exploring steps that you might do to try other values of L and K to try and spot a pattern for this part of the question where you have different numbers L and K and you uh, try and spot what's going on. Um, the um, Which is good to do, uh, but then at some point you need to turn it into this kind of syntactic process of what's actually going on where I'm, I'm explicitly using the definition of G. The definition of G is a really important thing, right? As soon as you have the defini definition of G, it's kind of like following those rules at the top uh, and seeing what comes uh, after that. 
Kane wants to know if this is related to the collapse conjecture. Um, not really. It's sort of thematically in the same ballpark as the collapse conjecture, um, but it, it's sort of nothing to do with the collapse conjecture. How fast are you expected to do these questions, asks Amelia. Um, I would say about 20 minutes, about 20, 25 minutes, um, and you're not going to finish the question, um, probably. I mean, if you do, that's great. Um, but after about 25 minutes, I would move on and look at a different question, I think. Um, just so that I'm trying lots of different things. Um, there's, no, there's no like rule that you have to move on, um, but in general, you might find it easier to do the first bits of questions, have lots of ideas going on, and then during that last half an hour of the exam to go back and fill in some, fill in some extra part, parts. Um, I think some people might score more marks like that than if they just went question two forever. Uh, we've got to explain briefly why the value of g of n is the equal to the recursion of f of n, and that's just because of the thing we said out loud about counting down before all the things. We expect it to not have finished every question. Uh, I'm being realistic, uh, so obviously I would love it if people finished the questions. Um, I would like that a lot. Um, realistically, the average score on this test is 50, and the average score of people who are taking um, at Oxford is about 75. Um, so yeah, most people have got unfinished questions which might be the first time you're faced with an exam where you don't finish every question. Um, given that, um, you might want to not be you know, stuck for too long before moving on. There are not bonus marks for finishing the question, except, I mean, there are regular marks throughout the question. Um, the mark breakdown is uh, in, if you want to see it for this question, you can download um, the it's called Web Solutions, the um, solutions document on the on the website. Um, from 2023, we're going to put the number of marks each part is worth in the question. Um, for this one, there are just two marks for that last explanation. So you could get 13. For this question, you could get 13 out of 15 without reading part six. I explained briefly, but without reading it, you can still get 13 out of 15. Long questions are marked out 15. But yeah, I genuinely think that people, if you spend half an hour getting those last two marks, you get two marks. If that last, if those last two parts don't make sense to you, congratulations, you still get, uh, what we're we looking at, nine out of 15 on the first four parts, um, which is not bad. Nine out of 15 is like, what is that? <laughs> My brain's gone too much, like 60%. Okay, so you should maybe write something for part five. Um, good. Different methods are also fine. Uh, what was the reason for doing marks on the test? Uh, people kept asking, and thought that that would be a sensible thing to do in the end. Uh, I'm hoping that it'll encourage people to try later parts of questions when they want to, uh, that it'll encourage people to move on and try other things, uh, and that people won't be so stressed about leaving parts blank or not trying the last part of the question. Because I think at the moment people imagine that last part to be worth seven marks or something, right? Because you don't know. Uh, and I think that makes it a bit more stressful than it needs to be. Is Matt harder than Tamua? I think so, yes. No, the test is out of 100, yes. Uh, any reason to look at six or seven, David? Uh, David wants to know about six or seven. Um, yeah, I think looking at six or seven might be a good idea. You can learn a lot by looking at those questions. I think they're just good, good fun. Um, Although I always say that people should just try questions that they find difficult, wherever you can find them. And if you're downloading past papers, then you're getting questions six and seven downloaded for free. So why not have a look at those two? Uh, the marks are roughly evenly split. I mean, you'll see on the test, but this one goes two, 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 three, four, two. So is that even? I don't know. Um, a good math score is like, uh, I usually say 70, 75. It's a lot less than a good. A level score, right? Where is it? What do people get on A levels these days? It's not out of 100, is it? I don't really know what people get on A levels. What's the normal thing? Do you recommend doing Matt and Tamua if you want to apply to a range of unis? Uh, so Matt's pretty restrictive if you're, well, not restricted, but Matt's only used by a few universities um, Oxford, Warwick, and Imperial are uh, the ones where you might need to take Matt. Um, other universities, there are loads of them out there that use Tamua. Um, depends which universities you're applying to. Um, has anyone ever scored 100? Uh, actually, not recently, as far as I can remember. 
Richmond map, not on the list of test centers. Um, I wouldn't worry because that is being updated quite a bit. Um, give it a week uh, and check again, and then maybe check if they. I don't know. I don't know. I think it takes a while to appear on the list. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't comment. Uh, see, Harriet says they got two hundred and sixty-four um, A star, but the boundaries are so high. Um, and petition wants to know if Tamura is being discontinued. Um, I think it might be. Um, I don't use Tamura, um, but I, I've. I think it's running this year, so if you're in year 12 at the moment and you're about to apply to university, then the Tumur might be something you should look into. Good. Uh, never really been stressed about an exam before, the Mac is worrying me. Um, reframe it. Uh, at the moment, you are probably thinking about math as being synonymous with you know, university and future and stress around not knowing what's happening the next bit of your life. Um, reframe it as maths questions, you like maths questions, here are some maths questions. If you can convince your brain that you're just going into a room to do some maths questions, um, then that might be better. Um, your brain probably likes doing maths questions. Um, I sort of hope that the stress goes down a bit once you start putting questions in the bag. Um, if you walk into the exam and you're scared and then you do question 1A, then whatever else, you've got four marks. I mean, that's not, that's not all of the marks yet, of course, but whatever, you, you know, never have to worry about question 1A again. Um, yeah, we get the marks before you, we do the marking. Um, and we also dis we also distribute it to Imperial and Warwick and, gosh, there's a system. We, we, di we do also distribute the scores before we give them to you. I know that sounds weird, but hey. Um, so Imperial and Warwick get access to the test scores quite quickly, yes. Uh, Herb thinks that they you are the last people taking the Tamua. Right, cool. More questions, more questions. Let me have a quick look at the poll. The poll's going to come on very quickly and then it'll go away again. <laughs> the poll says question four. I kind of want to do a short question. I'm going to look at one G. I'm going to look at G. The poll's gone away again. <laughs> I guess I should let you change your mind at some point, right? Um, oh, no, that's not how I scrolled. Right, we're going to do a short question. Oh, Patika, sorry. Um, I also read an R as well. I think I called you Patricia at least once. So sorry, Patika. And now we see if I can remember that. Um... Oh, it's got graphs. It's got graphs. Uh, we're going to switch to this view. And it still doesn't fit, and there's chat on top of it. We're going to switch to this view. Yeah. That's not much better, is it? Uh, right, I can fix this. It's the wall graphs. Woo! Okay, we've got two to the minus x, sine squared of x squared. Oh my goodness. Right, so we've got several challenges here. It's things multiplied together. It's um, sine squared of something else. It'd be good if we could say any facts about that um, that at all, right? Um, let's see if I can zoom out so that we can uh, have a look at the options. Uh, there they are. Right, good. Now, the question is, can I get the live stream back again? I think I've got my live stream back. <laughs> so as long as we don't need to switch on chat anytime soon. Um, <laughs> the tech behind the scenes is more complicated than you could possibly guess. Um, okay, so um, let's try and do facts about 2 to the minus x first. Uh, 2 to the minus x, I know that one. It starts at 1 and it decreases down towards 0. So I'm expecting something that um, starts with large values uh, and decreases down. Quick glance at the options. Oh, all of them look a little bit like that, right? With some sort of wobbly bounces. Okay, do I know anything after that 2 to the minus x? Uh, positive, decreasing. I could integrate it if I had to. Maybe, maybe not. I could sum it. I don't want to do any of those things. Uh, what do I know about sine squared? Uh, sine is between 0 and 1. Um, sine squared, sorry, sine is between minus 1 and 1, sine squared is between 0 and 1, so that's also positive. So, aha, I haven't read the, the argument inside the sine squared yet, but I know that this is positive times positive. It's going to be positive. Positive, going down towards 0, kind of wobbly because of the sine, I suppose. Um, yeah, that looks like A and C and D. Okay, and then there's an x squared in there, which is going to do something like weird, but it's going to change the values that are going into the sine. So. I can't really guess if it's going to be 1 or minus 1 or somewhere in between. Um, 
one or zero or somewhere in between because of the square. Um, so there's there's stuff going on there. Um, what I like to do is to switch between um, reading the equation in the question and then switch and look at the graphs and see what options I've got. Uh, this is for multiple choice questions where it's one of the graphs. Um, now I've ruled out B because that one goes negative. Uh, so I've got A and C and D. Um, so we'll spot the difference a little bit. A and C look very similar to me, um, but then D starts at 0 0.5, which makes me think I should look at uh, the value when x is 0. If I plug in x is 0, I get, ah, sine squared is 0, because 0 squared is 0. Plug it into the sine squared, you get sine squared of 0 squared. Uh, so 0, so it rules out D, so now I've got A and C to go. A and C look almost the same, except A is more bouncy. There's like more stuff going on. Uh, so I, I think about zeros now because of my experience with D. Um, I, I know it's got a zero at zero. Where are the other zeros? I guess the other zeros would be where two to the minus x is never zero, but sine squared could be zero. Could be zero if x squared is zero or if x squared is 180 degrees or, or pi radians or something. This question's from the past when questions were set in radians. Uh, so all the graphs have got relatively small numbers on the x-axis um, these days. If we set this question these days, it would have to do something clever with degrees. I don't know how I'd write that. Um, okay, okay. So I think I'm getting there because x squared could be 0 or pi or 2 pi in radians, which means that the zeros should be at 0 or the square root of pi or the square root of 2 pi. Uh, neither of those look right. Oh, no, hang on. That second one, um, one C, um, um, option C, that's got equally spaced roots, right? They look like they might be at pi over 2, pi, 3, by, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Yeah, okay so, but, okay, so C has got equally spaced ones. I reckon it's using sine of x, but not sine of x squared. Yeah, okay, and then... A is the one I'm going to pick because it's got those bounces are getting uh, narrower. Uh, x squared increases faster and faster. Let's see if I can explain this. X squared increases faster and faster as it's increasing quickly. Um, sine goes through another woo, through another oscillation faster and faster. Um, that means that uh, the kind of oscillations go faster and faster. It's a bit hard to see that they're getting faster because they also get shorter. They're getting shorter because of the two to minus x, and they're getting faster because of the x squared. I'm pretty sure I'm going to pick A here. Yeah. Um, it's weird that it looks like not how I was expecting when I was first thinking about the graph anyway. Uh, let's see if I can find chat. How's chat doing? Uh, chat is playing along as well. Ah, chat was talking too. Sorry, I didn't quite see what chat was saying on the way through there. Um, Aidan wants to know why we switched to degrees. Um, a level changed. Um, we're no longer certain that everybody knows what radians are at the time that they do the test. So it wouldn't be fair to ask the questions in radians uh, for the A level kids. And it's a non calculator test. Um, for the multiple choice, you get the mark just for stating the answer. No explanation. I tried to do the explanation here so that you know, we've got some explaining. But hey, uh, JC in chat, uh, I agree, says something, yep, yeah, like square root of n pi. Uh, how do I make sure that all the map papers are roughly the same difficulty? Um, I sort of don't have to uh, because <laughs> that sounds really flippant. Uh, because the, the, everyone takes the same map papers as each other, so if it turns out a little bit hard, then I'm sorry. Uh, but it still works as a comparison between uh, the same people taking the test. Um, we set the questions with uh, there's a there's a panel that reviews questions and tries to make sure that they're appropriate and uh, that panel is quite good at imposing a bit of consistency between years. Good. Uh, no marks for explanation on the multiple choice questions. Just tick the boxes. So let's have a quick look at the boxes. I don't know why I'm showing the boxes. This is the least interesting page ever. Oh, there's some boxes. Um, back in the day <laughs> when ABCD, I've just remembered that we added E at some point as well. Can I explain why? No, it's before I started. Um, so you tick for the boxes. You've got questions down the left there. You've got options and you're going to tick and you get marks for the ticks. 
um, but we ask people to show you they're working out as well. Uh, these days you'll be showing you working out on some blank paper, um, and in an answer booklet that we that we supply, we show you working out on an answer booklet, uh, so that we've got it in case we want to have a look. Uh, thank you, Marcus. They were very nice boxes, weren't they? Uh, how long did you spend on question one? Um, I asked first years this question. Um, I did a survey, and the first years came back and said that they spent less time than I thought. They spent less than an hour on question one, um, more like uh, 45 minutes. Sort of makes sense to me. One hour is how long you would spend if you were getting marks at a constant rate, uh, and some parts of question one are a little bit easier than other parts. Um, so, so maybe question one is a little bit quicker. Um, if you're practicing now, I wouldn't worry about time at all. Uh, is Matt exclusive to Oxford? No. Uh, this one says, this one says Oxford, just says Oxford on it. Um, but since 2007, we've entered a collaboration with the University of Warwick and with Imperial College London. Um, so some of their candidates will also sit the mat. Uh, if you're one of them, hi, welcome to the Oxford live stream about your Imperial test. I know that's a weird setup. Uh, the boxes are, oh, yeah, okay, right, good. Um, is there a Map B test that contains only question one and is an hour long? So Herb is referring to a special multiple choice test that we've done for a few years recently um, for candidates affected by, in order, pandemic, pandemic, typhoon. Um, uh, what's it gonna be this year? Uh, candidates who couldn't take the normal mat, uh, some of them have been invited to do a kind of bonus uh, short mat-like test. Um, the past papers are on the mat website. If you go to mat live and click on mat, uh, mat submissions test, or if you just type that without live on the end, uh, you can find those. Um, they're just more question one questions. Um, we, it's an experiment we've been doing where um, if people uh, weren't able to take the test but we want to shortlist them anyway, then we have something to, to do. Uh, good. If I took the mat test, I would get 100 and it would be considered cheating uh, because I have seen the questions. Right, okay. Uh, how many questions are there and how long is the whole paper? There are some instructions on the front. If you want to find out, uh, you can read the instructions on the front of the test when it comes to it. Uh, or if you want to get ahead, you could look at the map website, which is where you could find out how many things there are. Um, you do four long questions and question one multiple choice. Long F on four because I couldn't remember how numbers work. Uh, tips for getting unstuck for Will, and uh, I guess probably other people too. Um, I'm really interested in this. Uh, I think that going to work on something else and coming back is, is a legitimate strategy. Um, I think having it at the back of your head helps. Um, I think trying some examples, if you haven't already, is a really good way to uh, just play around with the problem, uh, to maybe find a moment of calm and accept that the next thing you write down is not going to be your final answer, but it might help you unlock a way to the final answer. Um, like uh, uh, when I'm writing on the board, I tend to just write down the answers and just get on with it because um, I've seen a lot of questions before, so I sort of know what's gonna happen. Um, when I'm trying out questions that I find really difficult, I just write stuff down. I just write down all sorts of nonsense. Um, sometimes I sort of talk to myself and just write notes to myself like, oh no, uh, or this isn't working, um, so that I can sort of keep track of what, what's going on. Um, and that can encourage me to go back and try something different. Uh, anyone else write down notes to themselves? Like a little smiley face when you get the right answer? Or an oh no? <laughs> Just me. Um, it's not blank paper. I misspoke. Um, someone in chat. Ah, there we go. Uh, it's not blank paper. It's it's an answer booklet. Um, I should know that. <laughs> the thumbnail is from uh, the thumbnail question is one of the ones that we might do today. Should we have a look at it? Uh, oh, it's on two thousand and eight. So I guess we're doing it after six o'clock. My plan is to switch at some point. Um, right. What else did people vote for? See the words, ah, people are too talkative. Teachers started complaining about it. Other people maybe wrote, wrote to it. Uh, proof style similar to 2008, 2007, 2008, where you can just choose trial and error. I'm not sure we've done any trial and error. Uh, someone emailed me about trial and error recently, and we've been having a conversation about how, you know, can you sort of get the right answer if you just sort of try some examples? Uh, I am looking at a thing you can't see. There it is. Uh, people voted for question four, which we already did, right? 
Uh, right, we already did this. Can I sort this? No. Uh, we did this on the live stream once. Uh, people voted for 1J a bit, and question three. Uh, three, let's speed run three. I know I just did all these things about like going carefully and slowly and working things out along the way, but let's try and talk about three. It is six o'clock. It is six o'clock. Someone in chat's pointed out that it's six o'clock. Uh, 1G, the answer was A, the graph that got bouncier and bouncier while also smaller and smaller values. Um, wait, no, I set this on one of the question papers. We've already talked about this. We've already talked about this. Um, calculating IFC uh, really blows the question apart because at that point, finding the minimum value and doing stuff with it is it, just not hard at all. Uh, and actually calculating it um, is not that bad at all um, because it's just like this, right? 2x integrates to x squared, um, uh, 2x integrates to x squared, put in 1 and 0, remember the minus sign, put in the c, that x squared goes to 1 third x cubed, uh, 2c squared. Don't need to add a c because it's a definite integral and that would be really confusing. Uh, so I've got a quadratic and then we'll just ask for the minimum value of this quadratic or something. And this is just sort of like really relaxing that we're now doing like quadratic science. Um, explain why this is positive. I suppose this is without explicitly calculating, but we're probably gonna find out that it's got a minimum value that's positive, which is a pretty good reason. Um, but maybe we could just spot that it's the integral of some squares. Uh, so the integral's probably positive as well. Uh, okay, I have some sketching in there as well that I'm not gonna do now. Ah, uh, sketch it on the axes. And they put little dots on the axes, that's nice. Uh, last look at 2007, there are 10 parts in, in question one, it goes up to J. Uh, sometimes the last ones are a bit harder. Um, this thing, we're told that this thing is true for all um, n bigger than or equal to one. Uh, so we should try and work out what that means, right? So in particular, uh, true for n equals one. Uh, we should go and plug in that, right, uh, and work out what's going on. Uh, I'm saying n equals 1 because that's the only thing I can think of where I can plug in a value. Um, and I suppose after that, hey, all these powers of n, they're going to get larger and larger. So that'll be okay. So I think it's necessary and sufficient to just look at the value when n is 1. Got to do some, got, got to do some adding in order to do that. Um, I reckon that that uh, turns out to be option D, probably. Just looks like the thing we might add together. Good. It's good, isn't it? it? It reads like a really, really complicated thing because of all these like weird powers and how these powers are themselves squares. Um, but that's like completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. The fact that these are all um, positive numbers is is the only thing that matters. Um, you could put any sequence of positive numbers in here, and it would still be true that checking n equals one is the only thing you need to check. Um, so that's a bit weird. Um, sometimes J is just ugly. Sometimes it's a kind of nice idea for a question that, but then made to look a bit scary and ugly. Uh, sometimes harder gold, actually lovely. Um, so this thing over here is bigger than or equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus 1 plus 100, which we can evaluate. Um, and then that number is 5150, so not too bad. Triangle numbers. J is for just ugly brackets sometimes. Check my progress in developing problem solving skills. <laughs> Solve more problems. Keep solving. Right, cool. It's six o'clock. This is a reminder that if you've gone for the last hour without uh, looking away from a screen, remember to look away from a screen, remember to blink. Uh, I'm going to drink water. Which hopefully, hopefully due to the new noise suppression on my microphone is not as horrible as it used to be. Um, oh, I could have muted myself, right? That would have been the sensible thing to do. Um, any reason you skip the problem solving? I'm loving the chat engagement today. Chat engagement is really, really high today, which is a uh, good reminder. This good reminder there are humans around. Hello, humans. Uh, any reason you skip the specimen papers? Do you know what? I realized earlier today that, I realized earlier today that I'd skipped the specimen papers. Um, uh, not really. Uh, I just thought about, yeah, 
The, the concept for this year is that we're going all the way back. We're doing all of them. Because in the survey that I did for first years, um, I asked them how long they spent on question one, and I asked them how many past papers they'd done. Uh, and quite a lot of them said that they did all of them back to 2007. Uh, so I thought in the Matt live stream, I should give you the same uh, number of past papers that the students tell me they're doing anyway. Um, I'm not sure it's a great idea to do this many past papers, but here we are, we're doing all the past papers. Um, obviously, I should have considered doing spec A and spec B as well. So, uh, yeah, hmm. whoops. Okay, good question. I have overthought that now. Uh, pass mark about no, no pass marks, more marks the better. Um, we're going to look at your whole, whole application, uh, in particular, Matt, um, but you know, there's more to life than just one exam. Uh, but that said, this one exam is very, very helpful for helping us to shortlist. Um, uh, oh yeah, Cyril is telling me in chat how to find uh, the sum over there. Uh, oh, bye, Patika. Um, good, see, I remembered. Uh, good, uh, my chat is completely misaligned with what's up there. What's up there and what's on my... Hi, Ambassador, if you're watching. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to... How did I evaluate? <laughs> Hooray, it's my Gauss moment. It's my Gauss moment. How did you do that sum without doing all the adding it all up? <laughs> This is my moment to be like Gauss. Um, the, the sum 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 100 all added together is not as bad as it looks. Um, the first and last terms add to 101, the second and the second to last terms add to 101, and so on, all the way into the 50th term, plus 51, is 101. So it's 50 lots of 101. Snazzy. Um, it's also an example of an arithmetic progression. Uh, those are on the math syllabus at the, at the bottom. Uh, but it's quite an easy arithmetic progression. Uh, David in chat likes the triangle numbers, so David knows the formula that you do 100 multiplied by 101 divided by 2, um, which is 50 times 101, which is 50, 50. Uh, and to be honest, I've seen the sum of the numbers up to 170 times, that I just remember it's 50, 50, which is the least interesting answer. Gauss time! It's called Gauss time there because there's a semi-famous and probably not true story about Gauss doing that when Gauss was like six years old, oh my goodness. Uh, Six years old. One plus two plus three. Um, three times four divided by two. Uh, Gauss don't guess. So let's chat. Good. Uh, right, good. We're going to do some questions from 2008. I would really like to talk about question J um, because it's the thumbnail and this counts as uh, mis-selling if I don't do the one in the thumbnail. And we've got a new vote in chat uh, which uh, is, is live now. I'm going to do a bit of question uh, one J over here uh, while you can vote on which 2008 questions we do live. I think I like question six. Uh, if you want to do the question that I want to do, we're going to do question six. You don't need to vote for J because I'm going to do it now. J has got a trick this year. Um, I'm on the fence about trick questions. Um, I sort of think there's no such thing as a trick question, but also this really feels like a trick question. Um, let's look at the way it's designed. Um, it's got a cosine and a sine in it. The sine is raised to an even power, um, and you are highly trained, perhaps with flashcards, to recognize that, aha, that looks a bit like this. Right? This sine to the 8, and there's a 2 outside, and a minus sine, and a 4. Um, so maybe we'll expand that out, multiply out, binomial theorem. Um, I'll get some equation involving cosine. Uh, which is a polynomial in cosine, maybe I can start to solve it. Um, this is not actually mad. This sort of works. Um, I'm not going to do it like that, um, but it sort of works. Uh, you get a root when cosine... Uh, you get a root uh, cos x equals 1, I think. Uh, minus 1, sorry. You get a root for cos x equals minus... Hmm. You get a root somewhere. Cos x is zero. You get a root at cos x is minus one and no other roots, um, which is interesting, I suppose. Uh, this J is from 2008. We've moved up a year. We're in 2008 now. We're going fast. 
The flashcards are on the MatLive website. If you go to this website that's on the screen and in the YouTube description, um, then you can scroll down to the bottom and there's a picture of the flashcards you can click on. Um, I'm slightly pausing because if you haven't seen this website, it means that you must have reached us through, I don't know, the magic of YouTube or something. So hi, if you're watching from the magic of YouTube, um, I guess this got recommended to you and I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sign to the eight can never be negative is the trick. Um, I suppose if we're calling this a trick question, the aha and the kind of aha idea um, is to imagine trying to sketch these things. Um, that's a horrible idea. Imagine trying to put inequalities on them. Uh, bounds. Uh, how big are these things on the left and the right? They're like sine to the eight. When you see that, it's a square because it's sine to the four x squared and squares are positive or zero. So the right hand side is less than or equal to four. Um, and I suppose I know that sine only gets as large as one. So sine to the eight for all of the power only gets up to one. So this only gets down to like the number two because it's four take away at most two. Um, maybe you can see where I'm going with this. On the left, the left hand side, um, cosine is between minus one and one. So this thing inside the brackets is between two and four. So this is true. Ah. Maybe you can see why this is a bit odd. Um, the maximum power of x is, well, so Cyril's quoted a rule in chat. Um, let's switch this poll over. The poll might come back in a second. Um, uh, the maximum amount of roots is, is the highest power of x. That's true for polynomials. Um, this has got trigonometry functions, so. Um, yeah, when we're not in Kansas anymore, um, we could convert it to a polynomial. But if we do that, the polynomial that I'm trying to avoid writing down is something like u equals cos x um, to get like u to the four, four minus two equals three plus u squared, which is like a u to the power of, oh, that's u squared, which is like a u to the power of eight polynomial, which uh, could have eight different roots. Remember, that's eight roots for u. And then, hard question, how many roots for x does that mean in this range? Um, so really, there could be a lot of roots. Yeah. Uh, how is 2 sine to the 8? It's not. Uh, I have missed out. If, if, you're, if I'm claiming that, I've missed out a factor of 2 somewhere. Am I being called out for missing out a factor of 2? I'm, try, I'm not, not I'm trying to keep the 2 here. How is that? How is How is that? Oh, okay, I'll put the two back in as well. Okay, maybe they'll be happier if I put the two in. Cool. <laughs> maybe it looks like I was claiming, yeah, maybe it looked like I was claiming the two went in. The two's also here. Sorry, yeah, well, luckily two is positive, so it's still, still true. Um, yeah, people in chat have noticed the uh, kind of thing that's going on here. The left hand side is super large, it's at least as big as four. Um, the right hand side is kind of small, it's only as big as four. So, solutions. Uh, would need both sides to be 4, um, which actually means you need 3 plus cos x to be 2. So you need cos x to be minus 1, which doesn't happen very often. It happens exactly once in that range. So it's kind of a little bit silly, right? That you don't actually, most of the numbers don't really matter, the powers don't really matter, you could change this power to be any like large power, I guess. It's a little bit similar to the 2007 question that's directly above it. Um, the 2007 question had this kind of large power that didn't really matter. Um, the joke was kind of, well, these powers get large, but they're positive. And over here, powers are large, but positive. So kind of the same joke. And they're using the notation, by the way, just to be really clear, that when they write this, they mean sine x to the eight. Oh, whoops. Chat was in the way there. Cool. I like having chat around. <laughs> More likely that I get things right right or wrong. Uh, Marcus wants to know about cos x. Uh, 3 plus cos x is minus 2. Um, and sure, uh, except cos x can't be negative, can't be negative 5. So that, that, that root's got them. There's no solutions over there. Is there a reasonable way to do it without the trick? 
Um, so the way I'm not doing, which I'm not certain is reasonable, is to look at the polynomial at the top there in terms of u. Yes, degree 8 polynomial. Uh, if you multiply it out, it's got a root uh, at u equals minus 1, which you might spot. Um, and then you get a polynomial of degree 7. This is not a reasonable approach. I can't think of a different way to do it. Do you think there would be a question like this uh, another day? Uh, maybe. Not exactly like this, right? I do, I do think this is a bit of a trick question. Uh, somebody in chat says, uh, is sine x also zero? Yes, correct. Um, I think you're maybe looking at the right-hand side where you've deduced, aha, we want four, take away nothing to get four. Um, so sine x will be zero. Um, this way you have one extra step to think about, remember, because uh, in the range, um, sine x is zero at several places. I've written that in degrees, force of habit. Um, uh, zero degrees is not quite in that range. Oh no, it is. It is, but um, here's the thing. Zero degrees is in that range, but it doesn't work with cos x being minus one. Uh, it's an example of where uh, cos x is plus one. So this left hand side becomes extreme, it becomes 16. You kind of need both things to be equal to four, um, and the left one is slightly easier to solve. I guess only because I ignored a minus two in here. You've got to be careful whichever one you work with. Uh, right, okay, between Marcus and Anonymous, you've convinced me to be more careful. Thank you. We were reckless an hour ago, and now we're being careful. Expanded, rearranged, like sine eight x. Negative fraction, because you're divided by minus two. Don't you subtract the four as well, though? Oh, but you know about this. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Anonymous in chat did some manipulation and then realized this is exactly the kind of thing I, I guess I was talking about before, where you do some exploring, you try some stuff out, and then, aha, you have an idea, which maybe means if you write up your solution, which you should not do for the short questions here, but if you wrote up your solution, you might not lay out all of the exploring that you did, um, but it's still important that you did it. Uh, if you think about sine being the derivative of cos, oh gosh, uh, yep, yeah, sure, cool, yep, yeah, cool, good link. <laughs> um, you should also probably just know when sine and cosine are zero. I'm, I'm, I'm teasing you a tiny bit there. Um, good, okay. What are we doing? Oh, there was a vote going on, wasn't there? But I kind of ignored the vote and just did the thing I wanted to do. How rude. Uh, question five is one again. Which ones of these have we done? Uh, oh, question two, absolute banger. What a classic question. Oh, we talked about this a few weeks ago. It was excellent, would recommend. Um, three, not a classic, just a question about graph transformations. You can have a look at it if you like. Four, I feel like we did this one on the stream before. Five, people have voted for the locker question. Hey, we did some foreshadowing on this one. I talked about lockers. Um, and then question one C, Ooh, early in the alphabet. So we're going to have a look at C, I think. 32% oh, of people have voted for the absolute banger of question two, so I might get to talk about that one again in about 10 minutes. Uh, let's go then. Uh, let's keep chat on. And the question down the side, I think I'll try and do this one out loud because I can get the whole thing on the screen. Question five for all applicants. Everyone does this one. Uh, Vanellium School has 1,000 students and 1,000 student lockers. Um, lockers are in a long line, and they're all closed and unlocked. Okay. Uh, first student walks along the corridor and rudely opens every single locker. Uh, then the second student walks and closes every other locker. Uh, closes two, four, six. Five hundred are open and five hundred closed. Um, then the third student walks down and changes every third locker. Oh my goodness. Uh, I sort of lost track a little bit in the middle here of what's actually going on. I've remembered this question is going to ask us about what's going on after the third student has walked along the corridor. Explain your reasoning. So it's going to depend on whether things are multiples of two, so that we can remember the behaviour of the second student, and also it's going to depend on the, the behaviour of the third student. Okay, so sort of here everything's everything is open, um, whereas down here the lockers are now going. I'm going to write C for closed, O for open. Um, so they go open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, forever. Okay, I've got a pattern there after the second student's gone along. Third student comes along and they change the state of every third locker. What does that mean? I've got some notes here. I'm going to try and circle every third one. Um,
Mm. It changed the states of those ones. So that's going to give us OCC, because they've closed that one, and then CO, and then O, because they opened that one, and then O, and then C, and then the next one was open, but they closed it. Ah, so I can kind of see a pattern here. This next one, it's now kind of repeated. Um, does that make sense to me? Oh, right, okay, so every six, because six is two times three. Okay, um, so after the third student, I think the lockers go open, close, close, closed, open, 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 close, closed, closed, open, open, um, repeating every six because uh, the second student repeats every two, the third student repeats every three, so between them, they'll get back in sync and repeat every six, um, like out of phase, out of sync metronomes at different speeds, or those drum patterns where you tap at two different patterns. Anyway, after six, and they'll be back in sync again. Uh, they both ignore locker number seven because that's in the first one. It's not the first one. Anyway, they both look ignore locker number seven. And then, yeah, good, okay. Right, what are we doing? We're counting them. How many of them? So I think it's about half of them, but it's a little bit subtle, isn't it? Um, it's three, three out of every six up to uh, so three out of every six up to, I want a big multiple of six. I've decided it works in blocks of six, right? Blocks of six because the, the second student comes along and goes, skip it, close it, skip it, close it, skip it, close it. And the third student comes along and goes, skip, skip, close this one, skip, skip, and then open that one and then repeats. So three out of every six up to, what a big multiple of six. Oh my goodness. Uh, 600 is a multiple of 6, 36 is a multiple of 6, 960 is a multiple of 6, uh, I can add on another 36, 996 is a multiple of 6, um, and then there are four more, so then I've got to go, then it goes O, C, C, C. Um, oh my goodness, how many are closed? I guess it's half of these ones plus three more. Am I anywhere near chat? Uh, yeah, ones that multiplied of this this or that but not the other uh, good um, three versus five polyrhythm does feel like the sort of thing I should look up afterwards <laughs> um, what am I doing oh my goodness the solution that I've downloaded from the web has loads of lockers listed uh, yeah I think I'm gonna get there we're gonna do the sums. Gonna do the sums. Gotta back myself, I guess. This is two less than five hundred, and then three more. So five hundred and one. Yeah, five hundred and one close lockers. Okay, ne not nearly enough expl explaining on the board there, as I've been scribbling and talking. Um, of course, in the real exam, I wouldn't be talking. I'd be writing, um, and I would try and spell that out a bit more about how that pattern repeats. Yeah, so it's half of 996 is 498, and then a bonus 3 at the end. Um, I don't love the way that 1000 is not a multiple of 6. That's made it hard. I mean, I, mean, I suppose it's got every right to be um, uh, a hard question. Fine. Okay. Right. Here comes student 4. So I'm expecting some sort of pattern. Polyrhythms again, right? Except now we've got... Um, another student coming in as well. Um, I think the pattern's now going to repeat, well, so I'm thinking about multiples of two and multiples of three and multiples of four. Um, so I guess that's gonna repeat every 12. So I'm gonna list a few more doors over here using my pattern from before. Um, and then I'm going to imagine the fourth student coming along. And I'm going to circle the ones that the fourth student interacts with. One, two, three, four. One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you see that that's the end of a block. So now they count, they restart their count for which lockers they're going to mess with. But it's like starting again. So it's kind of this pattern that um, at every 12, I think it passes every 12. I think it's something like that. Uh, lowest common multiple or something of the students that walk by by so far. Um, so that's this is quite irritating really to work with. But hey, 
Um, okay, I need a multiple of 12 that's kind of near a thousand because I've got to try and... Right, am, am I going to do this? Yeah, let's do this. So four student comes along, they interact with those pink circled ones. The sequence is now OCC, OOO, OOC, COC, in a kind of block of 12, which has got one, two, three, four, five things closed, five out of every 12 up to the end bit where it's not quite a multiple of 12. It's going to kill me here. Oh my goodness. Um, Oh, I just worked out that 996 is a multiple of 6. <laughs> is that helpful? Yeah, because I think it's a multiple of 12 as well. Um, uh, why is it every 12? Um, so students, the student's behaviour repeats once they've um, got past the number of lockers that's a multiple of their number. Like, um, uh, if you interrupt the, the second, if you interrupt the second student, you just need to know, oh, you've walked past 400 lockers, that means that you're about to do X, Y, Z, right? Um, because uh, based on the idea that 400 is even. Um, if you're talking to the third student and you find, aha, you've just walked past locker 18, well, I know what you're going to do next because 18 is a multiple of 3. Uh, the multiples are important. They're where the student has just interacted, so they're about to start counting again. You can imagine the students going like one, two, three, mess with that one, one, two, three, mess with that one, one, two, three, mess with that one. And if they all start the count again, then um, if they all start the count again, it's like starting over. Um, so with students two, three, and four, I reckon they all restart the count after locker 12. The even number student restarts the count because 12 is even. The multiple of three student restarts the count because 12 is multiple of three, and also 12 is multiple of four. Um, maybe you're expecting 24, um, which is true. You can think about this as a block of 24 if you like. Um, why is it not eight? Well, eight's not. The, the, after eight doors, the after eight lockers, the multiple of three student is is in the middle of a count. Um, they all start by looking at door, locker one and going one. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So they will say one at the start, and there's a point later on where they will say one again. Uh, that's that's locker thirteen where they will say one again. Um, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, that's not true at locker nine because students uh, number three is doing something interesting there. Um, they are very organised, aren't they? Um, Twelve is multiple of two, three, and four. I think the question is now going to change to a conventional question. By the way, um, just as soon as I've divided a thousand by twelve, do I want to divide a thousand by twelve? It's probably good for me, right? Do I know a thousand divided by twelve? No, not at all. Ten over twelve, five sixths. Ah, oh, we can do this. Uh, okay, 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 we can do this. So it's one hundred times five sixths. One sixth is. 16.6 recurring, so 5 6 is 83.3 recurring, so this is a, a point 83.3 percent or something, but this is times 100, so this is 83.3333. Okay, cool. So it's 83 blocks of 12 plus one third of a block, which is the first four letters. I don't enjoy dividing by 12 at all. Um, so what do I do? 83 blocks of five closed doors. 83 blocks with five closed doors in each is 415 plus a bonus two at the end. 417. <laughs> what a horrible number. Cool. Matt's not a calculator test. Um, I wonder if this question turned out to involve too much calculation. Uh, I don't know. Right, okay. The question now flips um, because we should not analyse this one by one waiting for all 1,000 students to go past. Instead, we need to flip and think about just locker 100. Um, here's the key. Um, we're going to think about which students have messed with this. Chat, can you tell me, um, can you give me examples of students that definitely haven't messed with locker number 100? Some people have, right, because that first student messed with every locker, um, and some students haven't. Uh, can you give me an example in chat of students that haven't messed with this locker? And, and then we'll think about ones that, that have messed with this locker as well. Yeah, so a good example, student 99. Uh, student 99 didn't mess with that, this locker because they messed with uh, locker 
k99 and then 2k which is way over 100, 190 and similarly 100 student 101 says a cool in chat I didn't mess with it um all the students greater than 100 says jc um student three didn't mess with it says marcus which is true we just analyzed student three they do multiples of three um so <coughs> excuse me it's pretty good um yep so ones that aren't multiples are ones that ones that are bigger than 100 so didn't mess with it and ones that are not factors so we count the factors uh, count the factors um, and this is actually it, the key idea for doing these last two parts of the question. Um, for um, look at 100 here, we're counting the factors of 100. Um, so it's a little bit like uh, the denominations that coins come in, right? Uh, actually, the UK doesn't have a 25 pence coin, but I guess that's a quarter in the US. It's a little bit international trivia there. I guess I can check these by making sure I've written down. Uh, every other one right these multiply to 100 these multiply to 100 i've missed out the number four <laughs> these multiply to 100 cool so 100's got one two three four five six seven eight i've definitely missed out 50 no nine factors <laughs> can't count uh which means oh gosh uh, including student one they all started closed and then it got flipped nine times which means it's now open Yes. Okay. Yeah. And if you've seen this puzzle before, that might have been the kind of punchline that uh, it's square numbers that have an odd number of factors. Um, that's actually not where this question goes. Um, the question wants to know about what's happened after the 100th student. But we, we've now had the good idea, right? We've had the good idea of um, it's the factors that matter. So the last part just wants to know uh, how many factors does 1000 have? Ah, but only tell me the factors that are up to 100 inclusive um, the factors are important uh, each student messes with multiples of their number which means that from the lockers point of view you've got to watch out for your factors you, you, if you lock up 100 and you see student 25 coming okay okay um, I don't know how many marks you'd be given for just the word open I suspect not very many right because you might have just guessed um, which is tricky right uh, Probably, if you're watching this stream, you're um, uh, probably not going to try and just bluff on the long questions. Um, you should write some explaining, I think. Oh, it does say, look, it says, it says explain your reasoning in here. So we, we are expected to do some explaining. Uh, that makes me think that we might get no marks just for writing down open, even if it really is open. Um, ah, good. So anonymous person asked a question and David's had a go at answering it. The Gauss moment. Uh, there's also, yeah, there's also those ones. It's 50, but yeah, 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 yeah. David's helped. Pick up, we plugged in n equals one, I think. Yeah, plugging in n equals one gives you like a, a whole bunch of powers of one, which are all one. Okay, cool. Uh, one C got lots of votes. I wonder why. It's not the graphs again, is it? Oh, this is. I mean, it's in radians for starters. So that's a bit odd. But I guess we could reinterpret this in terms of degrees if you want to. Um, when can you solve these equations? In terms of, so it's kind of trigonometry and equations at the same time. I guess something we could do is just try manipulating the equations to try and plug one into one into the other. We'd be careful along the way, right? But um, if we're careful, then we could just do the steps that you do when you solve equations, solving them for x and y. I guess we're, we're treating theta as a constant, so we're treating cos theta and sine theta as, as constants. Um, if that's scary, then perhaps we could call cos theta a and sine theta b um, so that this is ax minus by and bx plus ay. I actually think that makes it easier to do the question because now you can kind of focus on what you're going to do to rearrange them. Um, so you might try and rearrange this one for y and plug it back in. Um, and of course, we're going to be careful along the way about our division. Um, so this one says 
y equals 1 minus bx all divided by a if a is non zero. Um, so let's plug it back in over here and see what happens. Um, I think I'm also going to multiply up by a. So maybe it's going to turn out that I'm being too, caref too, too careful and I should. I don't need to think about that case separately. Uh, let's plug it in. So this is. And I'm going to multiply, multiply through by a as well. Um, okay, so that's looking quite good. Um, I suppose this is now um, a squared plus b squared x. Um, and then I'm going to take off b, so this is 2a plus b. So actually now I'm quite happy that I think, well this thing a squared plus b squared is cos squared plus sine squared, so that's just the number 1. So x is just equal to 2 cos theta plus sine theta. Um, and y is, is equal to, I can write this out right? Um, I've got to do some division multiplication -y stuff over here. Um, is there a danger that I divide? Oh yeah, I guess there's a danger that I divide. This is why it's going to be interesting, perhaps. It's B. B was my code for sine theta. I invented this code to make myself happier about things. No, it didn't work because I've confused myself. <laughs> 2 cos theta plus sine theta. I forgot which one was B and which one was X. Divided by A. A is cos theta. Uh, yeah, so again, I'm being like, if a is non-zero, of course, theta is non-zero. Um, so how many exceptions have I got? Are these really exceptions? Um, I'm not even sure they are. Um, so let's look at this separate case. If a is equal to zero, if a is zero, then I've got... Um, uh, that's because uh, cos theta is zero. So I've got minus... And then sine theta will be minus sine theta y equals two, and sine theta x will be one. I can solve that. I think it's always fine. I don't know what's going on here. It's always fine. A bit, bit disappointed. Yep. Yeah. Always works. You just solve it. Why is it fine at the bottom down there? Oh, because there's a one minus sine squared. You can simplify your answer at the bottom. I didn't spot this. Maybe you spotted this watching at home. But in my messy writing down here, this term sine theta 2 cos theta, that contains a cos theta, so that's fine. Um, and this thing here, 1 minus, and then there's a sine outside and a sine inside. It's so messy. Probably no one spotted this. Um, sine inside, so this is 1 minus sine squared, which is cos squared. So you divide by cos, and you get the beautiful answer that this is just cos theta minus 2 sine theta. So it's just got a solution, which you can just check. And then whatever theta is, this is fine. Just plug it back in and it works. Should I check it? I don't really want to. Yeah, there's enough twos around to cancel the cross terms and give me a kind of cosine squared plus sine squared thing going on. Yeah, a squared plus b squared is just one. Makes me very happy. Uh, yeah, okay. The equations are saying... <laughs> What x of y do you need to get to rotate by theta in order to get to the vector t1? But you're not expected to know that. Um, if you know about matrices and rotation matrices, um, you can maybe see where this question came from in a kind of geometry sense. Um, it says you start with the vector x, y, you rotate it by theta, and you get the vector t1. Is that always possible? Can you always start somewhere? If I tell you to rotate by 72 degrees, um, does that vector exist? And the answer is uh, yes. Just rotate the other way and, yeah, and you'll find it. Um, which is why this solution down the bottom with the sums of sines and cosines also looks like a rotation matrix. Um, that is side, a side note for people who wanted to be told about matrices. If you did not want to hear about matrices today, then I'm sorry for mentioning them. And obviously, wouldn't need to do that for the question. I don't love the way that this question is a lot easier if you know about rotation matrices because you have this uh, ability to just write down like um, m x y equals 2 1 and like that m is non-zero so yes yeah, fine um, I, I don't love that um, I think that means that people who have done lots of matrix stuff they determine like cos squared and sine squared so what's the big problem right um, I, I think that approach kind of means the question uh, is a bit almost unfair I don't know
It's been a long time ago. Right, good. Okay. I think I'm allowed to call it unfair. I guess maybe if you've seen rotation matrices and determinants of, ma determinants of matrices, then you're fine. Do people know about determinants? I guess you don't learn about determinants for quite a while. Of course not, because you don't learn, you don't learn about matrices for quite a while. You wouldn't learn that there's a, there's a general rule where you look at this thing times this thing, take away this thing times that thing, involving the minus sign. And that just tells you about the equations. Yeah, no, people don't know that, do they? What about cos x equals zero? Oh yeah, I was a bit worried about cos x equals zero. But then, so I, I, tried, I tried it out over here. So I convinced myself for quite a while that um, if a equals zero, then something else was going on. So I wrote out, my handwriting's so bad over here. Um, what would happen if a equals zero? That like cosine theta is zero. So I just wrote out the equations with zeros here and here. Um, and I've got minus sine theta y equals two, sine theta x equals one. Just solve it. Just do x is one over sine theta, y is minus two over sine theta. That's the solution. It's fine because sine theta isn't zero. Um, you can't have both of them being zero. So somehow in my algebra, this got flagged up as a special case um, because I'm not allowed to do this kind of divide by a step. But actually everything's fine in that case. I've analyzed it separately. OK, uh, it's a further maths thing. Is it an Easter egg? Possibly. Bonus 100. Yes. Ah, oh, someone got it. Best, feel, best, best feeling ever when you're confused by a question and then you realize which thing was kind of missing. You can put it together. I just got a notification. Oh, exciting. I thought my phone was off. <laughs> um, sorry if that uh, created some sort of microphone static, which I've heard it can do. What are we doing? Herb says their friend learned about determinants. Isn't it annoying when other people learn about maths? It's a bit annoying, isn't it? Uh, maybe that's not the right spirit of, of the thing. Oh, pure for question two, which is an absolute banger. I would like nothing more than to spend 20 minutes talking about question two. The thing is, I can't quite remember what I said last time. <laughs> so there's a chance that I just tell you exactly the same stuff about question two. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do about 10 minutes on question two. Um, get your votes in now. Uh, what should we do if we get a chance after question two? I can see that uh, one D is up there, but I'm resetting it. Ho, ho. You can vote if you like. Um, I'm going to talk about question two for about 10 minutes, and then we'll spend 10 minutes looking at one more thing. Possibly question one D if nobody votes. <laughs> but then we'll spend 10 minutes looking at question two again. There you go. Thank you, chat. Very good. Um, so when we talked about this before, there's a big bit of algebra in the middle where you're trying to find values of A and B that make this work. Um, uh, and the, the way we usually approach this question when I talk about it with people is to just sort of go for it, right? To just say, I want, uh, what do I want? Oh my God, there we go. Right, good, uh, to be xn squared minus 2yn squared. You can tell I'm concentrating if I stop talking. Um, and then just try and make that happen, right? By like multiplying out stuff. So the xn's look like this. Um, the yn's look like this. The xn yn cross term that I don't really want or, or like, um, it's got 24 of them over here and a negative 4ab of them over here. So I kind of like want this to be true. I don't really want it to be true for all x n and y n just for these particular sequences, but I'll take if it's true for all x n and y n in the universe, then that's pretty good, I suppose. I'll take it if I can get it. Um, and staring at this for a little bit, you eventually realize you can write this as one x n squared, take away two y n squared plus nothing x n y n. And that gives you some kind of comparisons that you might ambitiously hope uh, that you could solve. Uh, we've been taught to do positive values of a and b, so you eventually decide you're going to take 9 take away 2a squared to be equal to the number 1, 16 take away 2b squared to be equal to the number minus 2, uh, and then you sort of solve this over here and get a is uh, 2 and b is 3. And amazingly, uh, this works back in here. I haven't tried to solve it yet, but if you just plug in 2 and 3, it's just all good. So that's pr pretty lucky. It um, just really, really works. Um, so that's that's pretty nice. Uh, that means you can choose these values. Um, you can then use that. The idea behind question two is the, then you use that to generate new solutions because if they've got the same value, this is uh, like I guess maths code for same value 
of x squared minus 2y squared uh, at n plus 1 as it was for the n variables. Um, the very first one was we had x1 and y1 at the top there. That, the value of x squared minus 2y squared there was 1. So these things are all examples. Um, let's generate them. You've got these rules for generating them over here where you now know the values of a and b. Uh, so you just go and generate these numbers. That's great. Um, uh, as the numbers get really big, uh, the ratio gets really close to, um, I forget if it's 2 or the square root of 2. I think it gets really close to the square root of 2. Um, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, so we did this uh, We did this question a couple of streams ago. Um, I wanted to say something a little bit more about this generation. Um, I'm afraid it's another matrix thing. Um, that What you could do is to say that uh, if you think about the vectors, this is not really math. Again, sorry, I've just rushed through the least interesting bits of the question on the screen. Um, if you think about this as like a sequence of vectors, um, then what we've got is that each one is related to the previous one by a kind of matrix, um, which is the matrix 3, 4, 2, minus 3. That's kind of weird. Um, it means that there's a formula for these where um, the nth term is just uh, 3, 4, 2, minus 3, the matrix, to the power of n, I guess minus 1, uh, 3, 2, for my original x1, y1 solution at the top. Um, so that's kind of weird. Um, it means that if we had a nice way to work out powers of matrices, um, then we could like, simplify this down perhaps and maybe get some sort of closed formula expression. Um, at, at university, you learn a way to simplify that power of a matrix uh, to get something really nice involving, they're called eigenvalues of the matrix, um, which gives you a way to generate these without doing all the calculation along the way. That uh, just gives you a nice closed form formula. Uh, I'm not going to teach you to diagonalize a matrix today. Uh, because that would be, you know, you're going to learn it anyway when you do maths at university. Um, but I am going to point, I think, at the way this is kind of nice. If I got some minus signs in the wrong size, wrong, uh, wrong places, feels like it feels like a sort of occasion where I might get some minus signs in the wrong places. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Cool. Um, oh, by the way, the object, the object x squared minus two y squared. Um, is also secretly something to do with matrices. Um, it's the matrix 1, 0, 0, 2, x, y, um, x, y, um, which is maybe a stupid way of writing down a, an, an expression, right? This is just an expression involving squares, um, but you can write it in terms of a matrix. Um, here I've got an x, y column vector, here I've got an x, y row vector, uh, and that's a minus sign inside here. Oops. Uh, yeah, so then the reason this works in terms of matrices uh, is that this matrix uh, commutes with this matrix, which is just so sort of unhelpful a thing for me to say that I don't really know why I, why I said it. Good, cool, okay. Uh, there's some change basis nonsense. Matrices are great. I would not say worth cramming. So I agree with agree with Herb that matrices are great, not worth cramming. Um, I think that what happened here is probably someone who's very keen on matrices wrote two questions that technically don't involve matrices, but are consistent with their interests. Um, I like the way that I can go back to them and point out, hey, these questions got matrices. They also wrote some questions that got nothing to do with matrices, right? Um, don't cram matrices. That'd be a, a terrible advice for Matt 2023. Um, the way we write the questions has changed a little bit as well. Uh, 1f is doing quite well in the part. Well, let's have a good look at 1f. Oh, it's the trapezium rule. You know the trapezium rule is not on the syllabus anymore. Should we talk about it anyway? You did vote for it. Um, yeah, so Fonzie says some people are learning this in. Yeah. JC, you're right. The uh, condition we find is. The, the maths we're doing along the way, JC, is uh, sufficient but not necessary, uh, which maybe makes you feel nervous. Maybe it should. Um, it all works out. So we do end up choosing values of A and B that genuinely work for all X and Y. 
uh, we're sort of doing something slightly stronger than we need to. Um, it works not just for values in this sequence, but for any imaginable values of xn and yn. Um, nothing to do with the sequence that we're actually working on. Um, when you first read the question, you shouldn't assume that that sort of thing's going to happen, but along the way, just trying to find values of a and b that work, um, like hook by crook. Um, yeah, it's uh, the sort of thing where you can get through on this question. If you try and do research like this, um, you quickly find that, oh no, if I want to generate solutions to equations, other equations, then how am I going to find something that behaves a bit like this? It's difficult. Um, right. Okay, it's a multiple choice question. We've got, uh, oh my goodness, uh, it's something about the trapezium rule. And chat has voted for me to talk about the trapezium rule for about 10 minutes and then reacts to a YouTube video. It's not a bad life. Um, okay, so we're going to split the interval into 10, 10 intervals um, and it gives us an overestimate of the integral. <gasps> okay, um, what follows? Um, I don't really see how it could then be an underestimate because. This thing's just scaled up. I can't exactly remember how the trapezium rule works, but it would be totally ridiculous if it could overestimate f and underestimate 2f. Where would it switch, right? What would the rule be? Well, if the number at the front is between 1 and 2, then it switches from going overestimating to underestimating? No, I'm not, not believing anything like that. Um, would it underestimate this thing if I just subtract 1 from the value? No, because that's just a translation down, right? So I have my function f of x, and I can't remember how the trapezium rule works, but surely if you just subtract 1, they're just like shorter trapeziums? Surely that doesn't really change anything, right? Like the integral has gone down by 1, and the trapeziums have got shorter by 1. So surely that's just like it's an overestimate by, I'm going to say, the same amount. Uh, integral from 1 to 2 of f of x minus 1, that is the same thing, that is the same thing. Um, because x minus 1 is going to range from the only way, the only place x appears in here is inside here, and if x ranges from uh, 1 to 2, then these arguments range from 0 to 1. So that's the same thing as the thing in the question. So I'm left with d, uh, which luckily I agree with, uh, because this one is like upside down. <laughs> and I reckon if the trapezium rule is overestimating something, then it seems quite sensible to me that it could underestimate the value on the other side. Yes, yeah, so it's like 1 minus f of x looks at upside down function. I think I believe d, but only because I don't believe the others. So very, very much. Oh yeah, I'm correct. Brilliant. Thank you, Absolution. Can I justify this underestimate thing? Not really. I could, I guess, get out the trapezium rule. If I really concentrate it somewhere in there, right? Um, can I remember anything about the trapezium rule? I mean, it estimates integrals and it's not stupid, right? So can it infer some of its properties from the first, about the first three? Oh, it's to do with concave and convex. But sure, but what if f might be neither, right? Excuse me. Um, F might be concave in some regions, convex in some regions, it kind of works out overall. Um, yeah, okay, okay. So I remember the trapezium rule works by replacing the function with some trapeziums. And then it's only really the trapeziums that matter. It's the area under the trapeziums. I know that's not 10. I'm just going to draw in the top trapeziums as well. So I've got 1, I've got f of x. But it's not really f that matters, it's the trapeziums. Okay, okay. So overall, this function is neither concave nor convex, but we can talk about the trapeziums underneath, which the trapezium rule I think uses when you're doing the trapezium rule on f of x. And if you turn your head upside down, then it's the trapeziums above that are going to um, uh, be an estimate for the integral of 1 minus f of x. So if the trapeziums underneath are slightly too big for the area, then they must be slightly too small for the area above. Because those areas sum to 1. I guess I should draw that as a big square, right? Because it goes from 0 to 1 in both directions. Cool, okay. Yeah, if you're estimating, if you're estimating this area, then you're also going to be able to estimate this one, which is twice as tall, and this one, which is shorter by one unit and you're also going to be able to integrate estimate the area of this one which has been shifted to the right of it so far right it's under chat 
Um, but you're going to have a different kind of experience if you try and estimate the area of this thing above um, above it, which is like that bit you've removed from the square. Good, right, okay, I think I managed to do a, 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 a question there without remembering how the trapezium rule actually works. I am guess for, guess for closure, I'm now going to try and write it down. This is a kind of like YouTube bonus. Do I know the trapezium rule? No, but I can work it out. It's about adding together trapeziums, right? So it must be something like, are they equally spaced? I, know, I can't remember. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Uh, so maybe these are called like x0, x1, x2, x, I guess there's n plus 1. Uh, yeah, something like that. Maybe they're equally spaced. So maybe maybe x n is equal to n h or something. Well, I guess maybe but then it then it would go up to n h, which seems like a weird place to go to. Um, so maybe it's like b minus a over. Oh, I don't want to write down that. That sounds awful. Um, let's call these what they are um, with x notation. Um, and then what do you want? You want like one half of. Uh, let's say they're equally spaced. <laughs> I think I'm remembering how the sort of thing you might do at university. You could you can imagine having like loads of random trapezia, right? But let's say they're equally spaced with spacing. Uh, do I want to call that H or D or something? I'm going to call it H. Okay, because then I can write down one half of the base, and then you're supposed to add together the the heights of these things. X naught plus X one. That's how you find out how big a trapezium is. You do this side plus this side. You divide by two, and you have the height. I'm putting another plus in though because I'm not done. I'm going to add on the next one as well. Oh, I remember this. And um, these are not x's, are they? They're f's of x's. Because I want the height. I remember the kind of pattern that you get. Um, the, pa the pattern that you get um, has like double the middle ones. Uh, cool, right, good. Equally spaced with trapezium rule. Good, okay. Are there other transformations that could be applied to switch the overestimate, underestimate thing? Good question. Um, are there other transformations? Um, I can't immediately think of anything that would obviously just switch it. I can think of stuff like you, know, you do some weird stretch and then I, I don't really know. Actually, I think I'd do it. If you just stretch it, the trapezium rule should be fine. Um, should do the same thing it was doing before, but stretched. So if it was an overestimate for it, it's just a bit of overestimate. Um, what's, what's a weird transformation? I don't know. <laughs> Depends what sort of transformation you're going to do. You do some sort of witch here, then I don't really know what happens. Good. Simpson's rule in chat. Shout out for Simpson's rule. I think that one involves quadratic approximations, right? Definitely not going to write it down. Okay. Uh, we're about to hit seven o'clock. Uh, Fonzie wants to know about Oxford offer holder days. Um, we don't do these in the department. Some of the colleges sometimes do them, uh, but it's not actually very long till the start of term. So. If we haven't done one already, then uh, we'll wait till October. Um, especially um, just after the pandemic, I know that some colleges really tried quite hard to do an offer holiday, uh, but kind of college by college. Stretch might affect it. Stretch might affect it, says Herb. Function wiggles in between the trapeziums. Yes, yeah, sure, sure, but the wiggles of the function, weirdly, don't come into the trapezium at all, right? So if, if you stretch it and you use the same number of trapeziums, then the area under the graph, the real area under the graph, gets stretched by some simple scale factor. And also the area for each trapezium gets stretched. They're looking at the reference, the reference points that they're looking at, those dots on the curve, they move along with the graph. So the trapeziums are kind of the same except wider, um, which means that the number h out the front changes. And it changes by exactly the right sort of scale factor. So I think if you have a, a function, uh, wiggly, but then you're approximating in the trapezia, and you stretch it out like expanding a concertina. Um, not a good example. Concertinas contract. Anyway, if you expand it outwards, like um, stretching something, then uh, with Poisson's ratio zero, then <laughs> as it goes out, um, uh, everything moves in a nice way that works. Reflection in the y-axis. Uh, oh, I reckon the trapezium rule could probably cope with the reflection in the y-axis. If it was an overestimate before, I reckon it's overestimate it afterwards. You're just reading the values of the function in the opposite order. Hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, if you change the number of trapeziums, uh, the, the I have no idea what happens. 
could go from being an overestimate to an underestimate just because you're changing the number of them. Uh, but that's true, without the stretching, if you just change the number of trapezia, you can go from overestimate to underestimate. Good, right, okay, uh, let's watch a YouTube video. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. Um, I don't know what YouTube's policy is on this at all. Um, so I'm going to uh, pretend that the video is ending. Um, we're gonna pretend. Uh, that will stop the um, YouTube robots from noticing that we're doing some sort of content recycling. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get um, we're gonna get our YouTube video ready. Um, but really, I, I have no idea what the like content police uh, are like. Um, so so okay, the stream's going to briefly end, but then quietly come back again uh, after about after about a second. Um, this is also so that I can cut the end off if I get copyright striked. Hooray! Um, good. Okay, so if you're leaving us. Um, I will see you in 166 hours for another episode of the Oxford Matt live stream looking at uh, past papers 2009 and 2010. If you're hanging around, uh, don't tell YouTube, uh, but we're going to watch a video together. Right, good. See you next week. Okay, right, chat's very, very keen for me to react to this. I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, it, cool in chat says, if you like complex numbers, then you'll like the video, so that's all right. Um, I've realized, perhaps too late, that it's called animation versus maths. There's a stick figure on screen. This is like the ones from years ago. There were these animations with um, stick figures fighting um, and breaking out of bounds and running around a computer. Um, they were a thing when I was in school. It's like, uh, this person's been making these for a long time, I think. Cool. Um, I have absolutely no idea how this works. Uh, I think I'm supposed to turn the, the sound on as well. Um, uh, I guess I'm going to uh, watch a YouTube video and pause it a bit. Let, let, let's go. Oh, I'm talking on top, right? Oh, how do YouTubers do this? This is a figure. A hero from previous adventures. Uh, I see where you want to be in six chat. It's got the number one. We love the number one around here. Uh, yeah, lovely. With that. Oh, brilliant. Everyone, pause the video. Take your screenshots now. One plus one is two. Welcome to the awesome Matt live stream. Great. I've already got whether there was uh, um, larger plots to the video, so I guess maybe I'm in the wrong order. But it's got like. Oh, there we go. There you go. Iteration. Keep repeating. Um, is that like a first one's going to escape or fight the enemy? I think first one's animation versus animator. Um, but then, oh, okay. Yeah, break the two apart. Yep, break the two in. Nice. I'm gonna add two now. Yeah, this is where it's going. Um, later on, there's sort of like, uh, it's not turning into sort of animated thing, I think. If I'm thinking about the right size. Oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you go faster, you should loop it every time so that it doubles. Um, I realize there's sound going to you, but I'm not getting the sound. Which is just me being stupid. It's the same guy. Good. We're going to pause it. Oh, we're going to collapse it down to 100. Good. We're going to pause quickly while I try and find my headphones. <laughs> Least professional YouTuber ever, right? Oh, I've paused on another good frame there. 100 is equal to the number 100. But they fight that. There's a versus in the title, right? There must be a fight. We've got 13 minutes to go yet. I think it happened. Um, they expired miles to start animation in chat. Um, I'm a bit quiet in comparison. Right, cool. Let's nudge that down. Uh, and go over here. Am I an idiot? Is it still muted? Oh, Volume's too high compared to the mic. Two seconds. I'm an idiot. Right, we're subtracting. Oh, yeah, they just loud. <laughs> I've got. Oh, no. The sound design is lovely. We're turning it way down. Sorry, chat. Oh my goodness, an E to the I pi, brilliant stuff. I feel like we skipped past quite a lot of maths there, right? Like, we were just adding and subtracting. Oh. Ah, oh, there is an escape theme again, great. Uh, okay. Tasteful shading here with the um, maths floating in, in space. Gosh, that was loud. We've gone way down. I'm not sure the sound's really doing anything either. Okay, negative numbers. Can you get more 
Okay, back to subtraction again. Can we, I guess, escape? Part of the motion of the plus minus signs reminds me of... Um... Oh, good. <laughs> I was wondering if we were doing multiplication, because I wanted them to do doubling before. Yep, good, okay. And the motion reminds me of the Mathanim package, Manim package, that 3 blue one brown uses. Gosh, the music is actually quite annoying. <laughs> it is a bit quiet. I just made it quieter. We'll put it back. There you go. The straight way to complex numbers and now multiplication division. Ah, oh, we've divided by zero. Good stuff. Um, oh, but people in chat are telling me that the characters have uh, Easter eggs to explain their abilities. I guess orange is good at adding. There was a complex number very briefly. It's playing like Avengers Assemble style music because we've got a big square of numbers now. <laughs> Avengers love squares. <laughs> oh, hello, what was that? Oh, cubes, right. Ah, dimensions, there we go. Good. Very nice. Yeah, okay, well, that's enough dimensions. Yeah, bring it back down again. Okay, good. Powers of zero powers, part of the Matt live stream. Yep, you could write them like that if you really had to. Or fractions, good. You're going to go to roots. Yes, good, okay. <laughs> Cube root or no? No, square root of two first, okay, fine. Dramatic music again, square root of one, yep, good. Go to I, you found it, good. Use the I. Oh, we haven't done exponentials yet, how are you going to exponential it? Or is the I just good enough? Yeah, okay, the I is good enough. Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? There you are. I don't quite get how the third eye was the one. Never mind, never mind. You've now lost the sound. Okay. Yeah, but isn't my commentary like just as good as the kind of Avengers style music that's over the top? Briefly split apart into cos i pi. Yeah, okay, now it's versus maths, because now I guess Oh, lovely. That was a good I that was raised the argon diagram so a kind of circle thing going on there. That was good. I liked that a lot. Could have done anything. Chance to throw in a circle. Uh, you'll you'll never catch them because they're just a figment of your imagination. Imaginary? No, I'm not the script. Okay. I see it's all fighting with a minus one because it's equal to minus one, whereas the orange one is equal to plus one because they love adding so much. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> the animation has always been top notch on these, right? And if you haven't seen the others, you should catch the others too. Um, we've got a bow and arrow made out of twos. And you can also use your eye to do rotation by 90 degrees, which is nice. It's multiplication by eye, and they only went 90 degrees round, whereas the easy eye probably went all the way around because they're minus one. That's why they did a full jump. Yeah, cool, right, okay, so I want to discover the argon diagram. Negative eye. Oh, you're going to use your power of adding? No, but that will kill the nice exponentials. I kind of want maths to win. <laughs> is that not not allowed? Um, good. Yep. Cool. Radians not on the map. It isn't quite bad, does it? it? Should be degrees. <laughs> yeah, that's how big a radian is. You're going to use that because the length is one, which is your favourite number, or R here. Okay. Good. Have we made it onto the argon diagram now? We're, we're there. We're good. I can't tell how loud I've got the sound. Could be anything, couldn't it? Um, we're now like in a sort of exploring kind of music in the background. Um, I think we're doing uh, area of a arc, which is also on the mat syllabus. So it's starting to make me think this is like themed on the mat syllabus, which is pretty good. Gosh, the animation's good. Yes. Very good. I think the numbers, the numbers there, sorry to pause it, but the numbers animated on the way round. Oh, I don't know what I've done. I've restarted, so I might have refreshed the page. Numbers, 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 numbers. Are the numbers animated on the way round? Okay, stretchy, stretchy, shake, shake. De Deformations of a circle, theta, very good, right, okay. Yeah, 1.31, okay, so it's going round. Bling, bling, minus, and then 759, and then minus. Okay. I thought maybe they're going to tick the numbers right on the way around. Blink and you miss it, the numbers are going to tick, 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 tick like all. Tachyometer. Is E part of maths A level syllabus? No, number E. 
Number E, 2.7-ish. Um, yeah, it's on eight level, right? Also, put brackets around E. The party. Oh, look, we're learning about sine and cosine again. Really, no matter who And they're sort of hammers. Why are they hammers? What are they, tau? No, they're hammers. Yeah, you can do both. I feel like I've seen this animation as a teaching tool for sine and cosine. That's definitely a tau, isn't it? Oh, good. Helix. With a kind of nice shaded area in between. I wonder what that scar's going on there. Let's just make it look like a spiral. Oh, we found the eye again. Minus one. Sorry, I said before I said that sword was negative. Do some more 180 degree spins, which is good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Great, it's converted into a kind of infinite series. Oh, I don't know. Number of explosions, good. It's firing higher and higher terms. I just, I mean, large cylinder. I was like, what? the maths is more cool, right? The maths, maths should win. Um, let's fire it back again. Oh, so make the. You're changing theta, not the radius. I've, I've got lost on what, what maths topics we're now using. Um, also, it seems to be firing higher and higher terms? Or are they. You need those. I, you got it. Prog minus one again. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could write a really complicated expression that involves loads of minus ones. That reminds me of a different video. Um, Braille. <laughs> What's the function fire? It's firing graphs, maybe? Are the graphs tan? What are the... Is that relevant? I missed where the function came from. It definitely firing little graphs. Okay, so R's being increased. We've got this tiny thing about R going up. We've got dramatic music. I feel like we're getting to the... the oh, I guess we've got a lot of maths to go. There's now loads of sums. <laughs> it does feel very good. In terms of the... Stolen the infinity, that's very good. In terms of the like, animation of everything. Oh, you've put infinity into your function. That's not really allowed, is it? Somehow that makes minus one equal to zero. Ooh. <laughs> the span of all of those was R squared, was it? We've got a vector basis. Right, okay. This might be getting into. Here we go. Why are they all at right angles? What's that doing? It's just sort of transforming, isn't it? Into an enormous T. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge integral sign, right? Good, okay. Are we gonna do a contour integral before the day's over? <laughs> Can we do a contour integral before the day's over? Wax right back into the uh, Argon diagram realm where we able to do a translation up by nine I, that's good. Um, good. It's starting to lose me on... You're using cosines and sines for a great big sort of laser effect. Great. It's pretty bad. Good thing you went up high with that plus 9i. A little rotation using the cosine and sine. There's so much love and care has gone into this, which is just amazing. Look at the, the gra bit of ground there, there's some fire effects. Yeah, okay. Good thing we learned about squaring earlier. Oh, wow. Enormous radius. Enormous devastating effect. Ah, time to escape. But I've put myself inside a circle inside the function. So that's going to just blow up everything. Ah, oh, now I've escaped. Brilliant. Okay, where have we escaped to? Hmm, so it's the... Okay, we've got some square roots of negative numbers splitting through, so I guess we're in 
Oh no. Yeah, it looks pretty bad, isn't it? Are they are they escaping or are they Yeah. Okay. Cool. We've gone to the that's supposed to be like the imaginary world or something, because we kind of already went there. So I don't really know where that was supposed to be. We haven't really broken through the we're like breaking out of the fabric of the Argan diagram. Yeah, it's really sad. But they, they've made a lovely pact, and you can live in this small rectangle. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's the, the anonymous say it's the imaginary plane. Hmm. Oh, I've missed some some dialogue. Um, oh, someone in chat says they've got one S in step, which is very good indeed. Matt likes for helpful even for Matt. There's an endorsement. Helpful even for Matt at Cambridge. Good times. Uh, what's going on? We're going to put a complex number inside the function. Feels like it would be a good way to finish. I just really want a quantum reach crawl. <laughs> is that too much to ask for? Yeah, you get in there, and then we use the ooh gamma function, and then off you go. And it's going to be some huge number. You're getting blasted away to. Oh. I in the argument. They did put a complex number in a function, so that's good. Oh, hey, it's Zeta. That's all your friends. <laughs> I've never seen such a cute delta. Why is the delta so cute? And a massive Aleph infinity symbol at the end. Brilliant stuff. Thanks for making me watch this chat. Great. Lovely. Right, just wrapping up here. <laughs> Thanks YouTube for giving us videos to watch. Please don't copyright strike this one. Um, uh, animation versus animator was absolutely fantastic back in the day. Everyone should watch it. Um, and it's not going to be a YouTube party. We're not now going to watch more YouTube videos, but I know which one we're watching next time. It That was very good. It does feel wholesome, especially because the delta at the end is so cute. Um, clearly friends with the E. That was very nice. Um, I did like, so chat, thank you chat for pointing out the that there were going to be Easter eggs along the way that I should try and anal analyse or be intellectual about it along the way. I guess that's maybe why you wanted me to watch it for a kind of nerd reaction to the idea of, I, I just really liked the, the jump over because of rotate complex rotations. Um, I think some of the action is what you want that it's all the action that's just like yeah, yeah okay okay enough now it's a now it's a now it's a that's a robot monster that, that's fine and I don't need to analyze that right uh the delta is a cutie pie says herb which kind of works yeah cool that was really nice um thanks for making me watch the video making me watch the video yeah we're getting we're going there I think um there's some so I wanted, what did I, what did I want? I wanted a kind of contour integral, right? Because they had some integral signs. And it felt like the math was getting like more advanced along the way. And it's all about complex numbers. Um, and it felt like maybe you could have gone down a, they like, could have gone down like a, a pole of a complex number. Like things going to infinity would be, I think on the, maybe this is kind of what happened, right? There was a sum going to infinity at the end and they were escaping those big Aleph. Yeah, I guess they kind of went to infinity. That's kind of the direction that you might go, I guess. It's contour integration and there's some sort of poles. The poles are where it goes to infinity, so we've got to find the poles to evaluate our integral. I don't know. The good thing I didn't write the script is what I think we can agree at the end there. Good, right. Uh, Herb says, thanks for watching. Hmm, yeah, don't like it. Uh, it doesn't feel right. Uh, who knows if that'll survive on YouTube or if we'll have to cut all of that. Good, right, I do need to go and get a train. Contra integrals are not in the matter of the There's a good there's a good wrap up moment. Contra integrals, despite how much I clearly like them, are not in the matter syllabus. My goodness. Neither are matrices. Um, and neither is complex numbers. There are a lot of complex numbers in there. Um, who was saying someone, someone so in chat during that some E's some E's going through and somebody was asking about E. 
and e to the x is on the mat syllabus. Um, if you're ever worried about the mat syllabus, it's one page of paper, can't hurt you, it's on that website. Good, right, okay. Uh, take care everyone, uh, see you next week for some more maths. Bye. How do I, oh, I already turned it off. I did so well the first time. Yeah, no, I need to press that one. Yeah, integral sign with a circle on, which is just fantastically cool notation. Good, right, cool. Have a good week, everyone. Well done with your A-levels. Uh, bye.